Welcome back to the Modus Super Series and it will, no, it will not be any Bank Holiday Monday Blues here at the Live Lounge in Porto because as soon as we finish Series 3, Series 4 begins here on the south coast of England. But I'll tell you what, Saturday night we had some crescendo to Series 3. So, as for Dale Pilgrim, he was eliminated in the group stages, but only thanks to the brilliance from Luke Littler, he was riling the crowd up and he notched this Bull 11 Bull. As for Jacob Taylor, he progressed his way through to the semi finals. As you see, he got the better of John Worsey there. That was an elimination match. As it went to the semis, Luke Little just had too much for Scott Taylor in the end. A 4-1 victory for him set him fair for the finale. Jacob Taylor beat Owen Bates in a decidedly Bates, who actually notched the highest average of the competition, 113 in his group stage match. And so, our final was set fair. It's to finish the final on the bullseye after his exploits earlier this evening. <laughs> It's going to get better than that, too. A double Game. 14. Sure. And and Luke Luke Little, she won a Super Series Luke. champion. The leading Luke light. Luke. The Super Series. It's sweet success for the 16-year-old who becomes the third Modus Super Series champion. Step forth, pick up the trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, the champion of the Modus Super Series in Series 3 is the Luke Luke Littler. So that was how Luke Littler won Series 3. It's a new series, but a familiar face up here on the balcony. It's a very warm welcome to Scott Mitchell. First of all, what a final we had to Champions Week. Well, it was, a, it was a great night, wasn't it? It was a great night. I was watching it in, in uh, my hotel room on Saturday night, and uh, you couldn't put it down. It was just that exciting. Every game was going to the wire, and people were having to step up and do special things. And, you know, that is what Champions Week is all about. And the good thing is I can actually hear you on one of these links because on Saturday it was that loud in here during one of the links that I was struggling to hear Chris Mason on the back. The atmosphere here was absolutely superb. No, and that came across on the screens as well. And, uh, you know, that's just going to want more players and more players to be involved here at the Modus Series. Best series yet? I think so. I think it was very exciting. Um, you know, and that was the, the whole 12 weeks as well. It, it, there was something every week on those Saturdays and, and leading up and people getting in by the odd leg. It's just so exciting to watch. And this series is bigger and better than ever before. It's the most international series we've seen here at the Boulder Super Series. And it's going to be represented by the players we have on show this week because as we show you Group A, in fact, there is only one English player in the mix. We've got players from Holland. We've got players from Australia, America, it's, it's a real international feel. It has an international flavour, and that was the way that the Moda series was always going to be going. We're going global, and now the people from the globe are coming to us. And it's great to see. And you, I mean, I suppose the one name that really stands out in there is going to be Wesley Harms. I haven't seen him for a little while, so it'd be interested to see where his game's at at the minute. I'm really interested to see because I've locked horns with him many, many times in our BDO days. And uh, yeah, I, he was always a feisty player, very feisty. So, you know, his, his life has changed. He has his own business now. He's an electrician, set up his own business. So I'm going to see if I'm, I'm interested to see if he's really still got that hunger that he used to have. Are you intrigued to see what the dynamics are going to be like in the practice rooms now? Because there's a lot of different nationalities, a lot of different continents coming together, players that may not know each other. And as we know, it's a different type of atmosphere when you play here compared to other tournaments. Are you intrigued to see how that may pan out? Are the Modus series going to have to hire an interpreter? That's the question. <laughs> well, we shall see. Well, what we do have, as I say, is a great cast of players. This is what the bookmakers think about today's proceedings. So this is the outright betting to win Group A. Now, they actually have 
Wesley Harms as the 7-4 to favourite to go on and win this particular group. But one player we haven't spoken about is Mal Cumming. Now, he's one of the best players coming out of Australia. He's played very well on the World Series stage before. He's played on that Alexandra Palace stage. He's going to be a really exciting addition. Absolutely. I've, I've been out to Australia and seen and Mal play, and he is the real deal. It's just a case of being so far away. It's lovely that he's coming over here now, and we're seeing a little bit more of him, and I think this is going to suit him. Well, it is time to see what Scotty Dog Mitchell thinks about today's proceedings because it's time for his tips. Here we go. This is very mm. ambitious, Scott. This is a just under 11 to 1 treble. Just talk us through those. Well, I've gone for the most 180s with, with Lobby. He's a big, big hitter in, in that game with, with Barra. Um, Bloom v. Harms. Now, you know, they play each other a lot. They're both Dutch, so there's got to be a little bit there. So Bloom will be wanting to turn him over. And um, the Bauer cunning, uh, coming game uh, over 0 0.5 evens, I think 180s there could be, it could be a little bit tight and, and, and niggly by that time in the, in, the, in the group. Well, it is 18 plus B Gamble Aware to org if you're going to have a flutter on any of the action here at the Moda Super Series today. Well, strap yourselves in, get the seatbelts on, and don't move anywhere because the first game of Series 4 is bound to be quick because it sees Danny Lauby in action against Moreno Blom. And just as a gist, these two played in Series 3 and they, they had games lasting six minutes. They actually played eight legs in around about eight minutes. More to the point, Danny Lauby had a leg of 41 seconds in a game between these two. I'm more concerned whether I can get back down the stairs and into the commentary box in that time. We better let you go then. Indeed. Right, it's time for the action. It's time for Series 4 to get underway. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. It's going to be good fun as well. It kicks off with Danny Lauby up against Moreno Blom. And this man is going to join Matthew Wegger in commentary. Hello, Matt. Morning, Henry, and morning, everyone. Welcome to Series 4 of the Moda Super Series. And this is going to be fast. It might be a game that... I have to turn into a horse racing commentator to get it all out here. A battle of two left-handers. One from Holland and Danny Laube here from America. A man who has twice performed in the PDC World Championships and putting good performances there against Ryan Searle and William O'Connor. Arguably should have turned over Ryan Searle in the 2021 edition of the PDC World Championships. He's taking on Moreno Blom, young man from Holland the Budapest Classic champion this year. First leg, it's Moreno to throw first, game on. Also picked up the Hungarian Classic last year as well, so he's had some success. 96. Despite being just 21 years old, but if there's something we've learned recently, certainly from series number three. 100. Age is no barrier to this sport. Series three won by the 16-year-old Luke Littler. 140. This is the week in 92. Series 3 that was won by John Worsley and potentially a little bit of a handicap win in this early. 133. Long wait until the Super Series finals with Champions Week. 12 weeks 59. away. Moreno require we 132. John Worsley didn't bring that same level of form when he had that weight. But there is a £5,000 check at the end of the week. It's going to be fiercely contested this week with the 60. players we've got on show. Moreno, you require 76. It could be. First blood to Moreno Blom. Doesn't need to go down the bullseye route here. He checks the score of Danny Lauby to see him back on the 190. Good thinking here from Blom. 36. Not rushing or panicking with the situation. Good control and good stage management there. 50. I'm pleased to manage to get Moreno back down the stairs 40. in time to see some of the action, Matt. He nearly missed the first leg. Game shot. He managed to see leg. two darts of Moreno it. Blom. That's how quick and fierce this one's going to be. One minute, 27 seconds for Moreno Blom to go out Danny in 17 darts. Game on. A couple of lefties as well. It's not often you see lefties 100. playing one another, but it's becoming more apparent, isn't it? I think one 59. of the things that surprised me, actually, with this game is when I was looking at the group this morning, I was looking at players, and I thought, oh, we've got quite a few 85. young players in here. I was surprised to see Danny Lauby's actually 30 years old. He feels a lot younger than that. 58. I think it's fairly new to a lot of the viewers, and I, you know, when we, we talk about the American players, probably 
you know, you're thinking of Johnny Kay and 100. Larry Butler and uh, those types of players. And, and he's kind of one of the new breed coming through, isn't he? But it, it feels like he's been around for a long time. Obviously a second generation player. His father, also called Dan Lowby. 97. Used to play himself, was a good player. And I remember recently spoke to this version of Dan Lowby, and he said his dad's still playing, Danny and actually, that gives him a bit of a pumping on the practice board. Oh, you never know. Maybe we'll see him here 99. one day if he's Mirani require playing 156. in the right places. You know, we we just mentioned up on stage there. It's it's we're going truly global with the Super Series now, and, 57. and the way that Danny require players 20. can qualify. And here we go again. It's 20 for Lowby. Game shot in the second leg. It with Danny Lowry. Dart, 18 dart leg for him, but that's two dart, two legs over in a flash. That's a horrible Third switch as well, Moreno that one where you go up to double Game five. On. I mean, they've got the one dart in hand. Your opponent's closing down on you. He was left on an ice cream, Moreno Blommy, one of the 99. So good signs there for Danny Lowry. A nice little settler for him. 140. Fifty-seven. Do love that camera angle. Gets you to see the angle of entry of the dart, which you can see just kicking over a little bit for for Blom. One hundred and thirty-four. A little bit straighter for Lauby, but same sort of thing. It's just kicking over, and that's probably coming from that left-handed trajectory. Fifty-eight. Yeah, and it's funny actually when you see the dart going in as a right-hander, watching that because as a right-hander you tend to see it kick the other way. So when you're actually stood behind a lefty and you're and you're watching 140. them, it's more than natural for them, but very unusual for us to watch. Ninety-six. You'd say that double five Danny is potentially a settler there for Danny Lowby, and he's left himself eighty-seven here after nine. It might not have been forty-seven a settler. It might have been an accelerator for him. Tops after 12. No need for him to go to ball route 99. Blom Danny back on 210. That's Lowby then. 30. Moreno, you require 111. 79. It's rapid fire. We don't get a chance Danny to speak between 10. darts. It's, uh, so it's 10. He needs that double five now. And, shot and he's banged leg. it. Danny Lowby. So he takes a third leg and also a break of throw. Who am I to say double five is a nervy Game double on. or an awkward one? Danny Lowby's like, it's no problem. Who from two in that area? We've got a, a young 85. lady who plays darts in our county and she has a she has a saying and she's she her, her she has a famous brother, Neil Folds is her uh, her snooker playing brother. And she plays county with us, Susie, and uh, yeah, she says Nobody misses fives. That's what she says every time she goes for it. Nobody misses fives, and she rarely does. 57. Dan Lowby might be saying the same sort of things in about three minutes' time. <laughs> yeah, well, we're trying to wrap up the action. It's gone so quickly that we can't remember what's happened. 135. Can you hear for the the long haul you're here for the full week you're starting in group a 100 you're playing 25 games of darts before you get through to finals night only one player will go through 134 this group. danny it's requires important 76. to start strong you can soon lose touch in this group a well as 64. we found out when we played just Rainy 10 days ago 12 days ago you, you've got to start the group quickly yeah i don't know but i found it quite easy actually yeah yeah i found <laughs> it lovely i enjoyed it that's what you do when you're losing, isn't it? You just say you enjoyed it. 59. I thought it was a great group. Loved it. Danny, you require 12. Yeah, I'd like to have that group back Game again and see if the same results are the Danny same. But that's another story. It won't happen, but there we go. Well, Lowby is now just one leg away from leg opening Moreno his campaign off really well. Running at an average of 86, which is around about his seasonal average. So this 93. is what you're seeing is Dan Lowby. This is his sort of par performance. Yeah, it is. And, and you know when you play him that, that that's where you've got to be to, to kind of have a chance with him. He, he's... Uh, 85. He's one of those that is... His bad game never really seems to be too bad. 
100. He does have a big list of titles. I'm probably not going to be able to 95. read them off because, it, one, it's a sizable list, and two, they're playing so quick that I'll probably only get about three or four done before the end of the leg. 180. Has he got the Virginia Beach one? I've always, I've always thought that sounds a great tournament to go to. He might have, because he's got one called the Witch City Open, which maybe that's the city it was. He's just timed perfectly 64. here. The first 180 of the series. That's on the back of a 140 and a ton. He's got the opportunity here to go out in 12. He's, he's undecided. He hasn't gone for the 12 and ball. 65, Moreni requires 164. to wrap it up. He's banking on Blom not hitting the 164, which you can't do from there. So it is 90. double eight Danny for the first 16. points of Super Series 4. Game, shot, and the match. And he does it on Danny double Lowby. four. Danny Lowby reaches four legs in super quick time, just over eight minutes. We said it'd be fast. We said it'd be good. It was an average of nearly 90 there for Danny Lowby as he hits the top of the table. Coming up next, we've got Jordi Brewer and Wesley Harms. Well, I told you it'd be quick, wouldn't it? The game between Danny Laubier and Moreno Blom. A 4-1 win for the American done in the space of 8 minutes and 18 seconds. That's actually the quickest game of the series so far. Next up for us is Yuri Brewer up against Wesley Harms. Two ADC European players going toe-to-toe -to -toe here as part of our partnership with ADC Europe. Watching this one in the box is Matt Edgar and Scott Mitchell. Thank you, Henry. And this one is a game as a pundit... I can offer you no further advice on. We have got two players here at different stages of their careers. Wesley Harms, someone we're very familiar with. We've seen him at Lakeside and in the BDO World Championship many times as a tour card holder, taking on the 20-year-old here on debut, Jordi Brewer, a young man who's been playing on the development tour with... Hit and miss levels of success, but one thing I'm going to say about Jordi Brewer is I don't think he reflects what the sports book suggests. I think he's going to cause some problems today. He's had some good performances over the last 12 months or so, and he's going to be a danger to this group. But when we look at Wesley Harms, he is the class act of the first group. Leg, and you're someone you're going to know quite well, Game Scott. On. 
Yeah, Wesley and I have uh, locked horns a few times back in our video days and quite literally locked horns. He's uh, he's a really tough opponent. 54. We were sponsored by the same dart manufacturer at the time and uh, we had the same shirt sponsor at the time. So we knew each other pretty much inside out. And uh, I think a bad start, is it? Your first three darts at the Moda series. I can vouch for this. So the last week of phase number three i played 16. in group b and i hadn't played for about nine months going into that group and my first start of that group was a treble 20 and from that moment i just settled straight away so i can tell you now wesley harms will feel good 95. with that first start going straight in the treble because you just don't know what to expect and when it gets in there and you see the dart in the treble under the lights again and you know it just feels 57. like home so you spoke to Wesley this morning, didn't you? And he said he doesn't quite know what to expect, but when you start well, it, it just makes everything feel a bit more normal. I, th I think with a player like Wesley, I think the attitude of, 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 of not losing sort of comes flooding back. You know, he's had a lot of success. He's, you know, he's been a, a World Cup singles champion and, and you know, many, many accolades with, with the Dutch team and, and many visits to, to Lakeside. And this, this sort of, throw is just you you've been up there this is a this is a dream so i don't think i've ever 100. thrown on a better throw in all my time in darts or, or one that just feels as comfortable as this one it's a it's just a lovely setting and if you can't sort of get your mojo back thrown on this throw you, you won't get it back anywhere 48 wesley you require 85 i think when i came up last week i described it as a euro tour that's how it felt up there like a euro tour stage and with the lighting and everything that's on there. But this is a great start here from Wesley 69. Harms. He gets a dart of the double after just 14. Yeah, thanks for the Euro Troll reference, mate. I've never been to one of those, so I'll take your word for it. 134. Wesley requires 16. 16 for a 16 darter. And it's sat quite nicely for Wesley, the way his darts light. Unable to use it and chase it over to 12. the fours and... If there is Yuri going to be a weakness when you haven't played for a while like Wesley hasn't, it is going to be when you're moving around the board and going at the doubles. And killing legs off. You know, you, you've not been used to killing legs Wesley off and getting four. that buzz. So here he goes again for double two. Double one now. No score. You don't want to be chasing and he's Yuri chased it around. 48. So Yuri has a big chance here. Still the leg. Double eight now. 32. And again, Wesley it's his first four. time up there. He's chasing his first leg too. This is just how we thought it Game may go. The first leg, Wesley Harms. And it goes to Harms. And those breaks of throws in over 20 darts. They are killers, Second aren't they? Leg is you just, to throw first. If you lose one of those, you don't get it back. You've got to go and do a 12 to get it back. It makes it such hard work. And of course, now Wesley's got his tail up because he's just won a leg that maybe should have got away from him. 140. And when you are the player throwing first, like Jordi was in that situation, you, you feel the leg's gone. And then 16. you've got a little bit of hope. I want 48. I've got two darts here. Two darts at an idealistic double. And a double you can pick. He picked the double 16. He missed his two darts. And it sort of, he felt it gone. 100. Then he felt hope. And then it went. So a roller coaster of emotion here already at. 9.54 a.m. 77. Yeah, indeed. And and I, I said to you, we, we spoke before, and, you know, Wesley did actually win a tour card. He, he came to Q School and, and won a tour card just as, as the COVID sort of pandemic hit. Um, 45. And he chose not to travel and, and use his tour card for the, for the main reason was that um, him and his young lady had just 58. had a baby and it was premature. So the baby was in the hospital for 13, 14 weeks. So he didn't want to come and catch anything and not be able to go and see his baby. And also, so I, I kind of totally get where he's coming from. 16. Family comes first. And, uh, you know, he said, I'm still a young enough man. The darts can still come whenever I'm good and ready. So, um, yeah, fair play to him. 180. Wesley require 156. A nice 180 there from Brower. It's Wesley looking at 156. He'll look to put the pressure on the 126. 100. Which he duly does, Yuri and now Yuri really only needs one treble to get a dart at the ball, but it has to be that treble 19. It's bullseye. 
101. Very close Wesley indeed. Width of a wire. Good six starts there from Yordi as well to really bring himself into this game because it was looking at one point like Wesley was just going to move away with this one. 36. And he has carved Yuri himself an opportunity 25. to get that breaker throw straight back. He game thought that one in was in. There. He moved very Yuri slightly, Roller. but it was in with the last one. And he levels us back up at one apiece. But just going back to what you mentioned Third there about Wesley first. Harms with that game tour on. card, what was interesting about that situation was in the middle of that, he actually renewed his tour card as well. And at that point, I thought maybe 16. we're going to see Wesley Harms travel a little bit and come into the events, especially when the restrictions and things moved. But he didn't. He renewed the card and then never actually used the card in that second season. No, no, he didn't. That was that was a strange 85. one for me. Um, but I suppose if, if you think about it, when things were just starting to get lifted, particularly here in the UK, in, the, in sort of that January or February a year after they were, were, were sort of restricted. Uh, and then we went into sort of like another mini lockdown for a little while, didn't we? And I think 95. maybe that turned his head because, um, yeah, having a youngster at home, that, that, that my, my, my dear brother had a, a premature little boy. And, and, and I know what you go through for that. That first six months is, is, is just torture. And uh, I can understand why. I can understand why. I, I totally get it. But... It's good to see him back now. Uh, he's using a different dart than he used to when I, when I used to play him. So I don't know whether this is um, still one of the branded darts that he used to use. Um, I see he's still got their logo on 59. his shirt. But uh, he, it's a slightly different dart, I think, than I've ever played him. I've played against him with. He used a, a Wolfie style dart, and 26 grams, I think he was on then. 65. Forty-five. Wesley require one hundred and sixteen. Well, we are looking like we could have a third breaker throw. Normally, the player who throws first is the favourite, but not in this match. It's tops for a third break in a row and the best leg. Seventy-six of this match so far. He will come back at tops. Nothing that the order can do from two two five. Eighty-one. Wesley require forty. It's tops. A third break of throw. Game shot in the third leg. There it is. Wesley Harms. Three breaks. The breakathon continues. Well, I'm just looking through the form of Yordi to see to what first. we can expect. I said Game it's on. going to be a little bit inconsistent, but he's going to be dangerous. I think there's a result that I can pick out that will really prove how dangerous Yordi can be in this group. He had a victory this year 100. just one month ago against Keen Barry. Well, that shows the pedigree right there, doesn't it? 125. You know, I don't think he's at this. Both players seem to be... Uh, I don't know whether you say overthrowing or overtrying early doors here 85. on their own throw. They seem to be more comfortable uh, against the throw, and I think we can see that from Yuri's opening throw where 58. he went off 125 there. But he didn't back that up, so he's harm still effectively has the throw in this leg. I think sometimes players get a little bit guilty of at the start of a 16. session and at the end of a session, just getting a little bit too embroiled in the story of everything. When you get in that middle bit, the meat of it, it's just you're just going through the motions and it's fun and it's enjoying you're enjoying the battle. But at this point you're trying to almost do what we're saying. Set down a bit of a marker, set down a bit of a store, and not, you're almost playing 16. to the commentator's words rather than just playing the game of darts. You do. You get an autopilot. You, you worry about your first six darts and trying to get off the mark and making sure they're well, time and time at minimum. And then, you know, once you achieve that, you then let the, let the brakes off, and, and nine times out of ten, you'll follow with 140s and 180s. It's, it's a strange... But, but in your head, while you're actually playing, you don't believe you're actually you're, you're doing that because you... You think you're not thinking the same, but you quite clearly aren't. Don't get any Game closer without going in, leg. and he just comes Yuri off the Brower. barrel. And that is a 15 data there from 
Jordi Brewer brings us back level and once again breaks the throw. Fifth leg, it's Yuri to throw first. And again, he I know won. I don't like that you shouldn't look back as a player, but how do you nick that first leg? He'd now be 3 1 and uh, far more comfortable, let's say. We're seeing glimpses from both players, and I think they're probably both going to grow into this as the week goes on. I think that's one thing we're really going to see with Wesley Harms as well, because he hasn't played for a while. I think today we're going to see him grow and develop throughout the day. And then I think as 16. the week goes on, he could then start to justify that favouritism. There has to be an element of rustiness for that long. Even even if he's been practice, practicing solidly for the last four weeks for this, it, it, 140. The, you know, match practice is, is so hard to come by and good match practice. So, you know, there has to be a rustiness. 16. Again, I can only talk about this from my own experiences of a couple of weeks ago, but you have to try even harder to get mentally into the place you need to be on that stage. Because when you're just playing all the time, when it comes to 100. the game, it's, it's a bit easier to split the light switch. Where this was more like a dimmer. That you've got to turn 90. up and Wesley require 100 to get into that place and to lose yourself in that game. You, you feel like a bit of a bystander in the early bits, which is, I think, what's happening here with Wesley. He's just almost a bystander to his own game. And I think as it goes on, 60. that dimmer switch will get brighter. And I think he's going to develop as the week goes on. Yeah, I agree. And I, and I think that the, the problem we had the other week with Group B is you only had eight Wesley games in the group as well. So you had to hit the ground running and and get those first wins on the board pretty quickly to, to show the, the rest of your opponents. With this, I think you get, I think it's about 12 games each or something. So, so you know, you have got a little more time to get into it. And if you can string three or four in a row, middle of the, you, you put yourself right up there towards the top. It's 15 games here 43. in Group A, five games a day, Wesley three required. days 18. of action. Play a top of the table, we'll go automatically through. Game shot on the fifth leg, Wesley Another. Harms. Break a throw, all five gone against. It's very rare that we see a game that goes all with breaks a throw, but we're on for the possibility of that Sixth happening. Is Wesley to throw first. Game on. Now Wesley will be trying to close this out now. Put his first points on the board in the group. 60. I find, I find that. Uh, this is, I find it very difficult to be sort of maybe having a loss and then you have a game off and then you were straight back on and, and you've got no time to process. You have to really throw it away as fast as you walk off that stage. You have to leave whatever's happened in that game behind. And I would, I'd imagine if whether that's whether you won or lost. 100. Well, you can speak from the experience of losing from a couple of weeks ago and I can speak from the experience of winning from a couple of weeks ago so 77 yeah thanks for mentioning that once more <laughs> I'm enjoying your company already it's only game two and I mentioned it three times I oh, know you're getting worse than Dozer Dozer mentioned I had a 22 average the week before by the second dart I'd 95. thrown 95 when you look at the the stats though, of this game, and you look at Wesley Harms, you see it was around about an 82 average. I do think that's going to go up, but it's quite easy to see where it is going to go up when you look at those checkouts of just three from 14. Just a couple of darts off of that, and he's going to be up to that sort of mid-80s average, which is where I probably think he's going to be come the end of the week. Yeah, your, your average stats really are made of, of how many darts it, it takes to get out. You know, these, these big averages you see, the 100 pluses, they're all one dart, and uh, well, I th I th we were commentating last Monday. I think it was 100 average last Monday, and somebody had like 12 darts. I think it might have been Luke 45. Littler, actually. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, he'd had 12 darts and still did 100 average. And you think, whoa, the man is flying. And that's how it turned out to be come Saturday night. 81. Where's the, the final? Require 141. It's on. It's off. 109. And Yuri it might only be one dart here for, for Jordi. He's going to get two at double four to take us to a deciding leg. Game and that is a big leg. dart. That's Yuri a good Brother. dart. When your opponent has got a single dart at a double for the match, he's got three in his Seven hand. Final leg. It's Yuri to, to throw first. Polish that off. Game on. But can he now hold his throw? That's the big question. 
moment. Something neither player has been able to do so far in this match, but there's no time like now to do so, because if he can do it now, he will be joining Danny Lowry on two points. Yeah, and you would think that he's he's kind of had the 100. chance three times to do it. And he should be into the run of it by now, but that's a problem dart for him, that, that low dart 46. on the treble 20. And came out a little one dart too late for me. There are two stylish guys on the stage. Who's going to turn on the style? Say stylish guys. Look at those shoes of Wesley Harms and the almost three-quarter lengths of Yordi. Yeah, Wesley's always had some sort of flash 100. pair of shoes in all the time I've ever known him. One of the things he's known for. Well, this is just going to be three good darts to win this, and there's two of them. 140. There's them shoes. Look at those. Would you go out in a pair of those, Scott? No, no, I think he should come on to crocodile shoes or something as a walk-on, really. 140. I said it'll take three good darts, and they've both found two in that next visit. You see why I said three? Because one treble now leaves them on a handy shot. 140. This is brilliant. Really, really good end. I said he was going to turn on the style and back-to-back -back 140s. But it might not be enough. He's going to get a shot. 92. The 12 darts. Wesley require 36. Double 18. Game. And he shot. crosses and the, the line with Wesley a 14 Harms. dart leg there. Wesley Harms. He won all those legs against the throw not one single holder throw in that match which is quite an unusual story but an average of around about 84 and he haven't been playing darts for as long as wesley hasn't that is a good sign for him and an ominous sign for the rest of the group because he is here to play coming up next we've got lee cox taking on malcolm in of australia
Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where Wesley Hans may have just found the spark as he got the better Yuri Brewer by four legs to three in our second match of the day. Well, match number three sees Mal Cumming take on the Cox and watching this one in the commentary box. Here's Matt. Here's Scott. Yeah, thanks, Henry. Um, you join us there. I don't think Mal could have come from any further to, to be here in Portsmouth today. He's... Uh, all the way over from Australia. Lee Cox has had a bit of a journey as well. Mal, there he is. 47 from Melbourne. 23 gram dart, which is unusual for a big guy. And there's Lee Cox. Not a million miles away in Crawley. I first came across him in that London County team all those first years ago playing Mal for Dorset. First. So game on. I know that Lee's been around a while as well. I've also been out to Australia, played in the uh, Australian Darts Open, and I met this fella, Mal. And uh, 40. A more likable fella you couldn't meet, but I think that's for Australians in general. I'm really excited to see Mal coming in this match and to see how he handles the Moda Super Series, but he's going to have to be class because Lee Cox has started off with a maximum. Mal coming. When we look at that DPA Pro Tour, if you can find an event that he hasn't reached at least the quarterfinal of, well done. Because it is extremely hard. He's dominating 60. darts over in Australia at the moment. And he's not just, let's say, reaching a lot of stages, winning a lot of titles. He's pretty much playing in every final going 45. over there at the moment, which is some good response when you look at he had the disappointing Q school coming off the back of that World Championship where he played at the Alexandria 100. Palace this year. Took on Alan Souter in the opening round. So he's now played in the World Championship on both codes and organisations. So does have some Lee stage and camera experience. I think he could be a bit of a, a nuisance this week to the favouritism of Wesley Harms. 137. Yeah, particularly as he works his way into the week, I think he, he, he absolutely could. Uh, you know, he has the pedigree. There is no two ways about that. 137. Lee, you require We've 24. Chucked all the praise on Mal coming at the start of this one, but Lee Cox is on a double after just 12 darts. Game shot does in the take first it out with the third Lee one. Cox. Lee Cox like yourself, I've spent a bit of time in his company. If there's one thing he highlights as his weakness, it is Second leg is those doubles, those checkouts. Game so on. to polish it up in the first visit there, that's going to settle him into the week. Yeah, he, he should be He should be 80. feeling good. He had a semi-final yesterday at the Challenge Tour. Um, and he sort of more or less left there and grabbed a bite to eat and then headed for Milton Keynes down 60. here. 60. Stay overnight to be here for this morning. So my fear for Lee is, is would there be some fatigue? He's at three days away with the challenge tour. And now 140. he's looking at three days again, for sure. Um, in this group, a he'll be looking to get out of group. A, I would imagine and try and get himself 85. a couple of days rest. I think the change of venue, though, as well. I think if it was all in one venue, I think you'd worry a little bit more for fatigue. But I think when you come in here, 80. and you walk through those doors and you see the arena again and the stage, just sort of rejuvenates everything. It really wakes the competitor up inside of you. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right. And, you know, we, the only thing that you can compare all those days in a row with is... Is those Q school days 16. where some of the guys have been there for seven days in a row, same venue, same hotel, same room. Y you even get to the point where you're trying to find something different to eat after the day is ended. 100. You know, it's, uh, Lee, you require 100. I, I agree with you. I think I think a change of venue could do him. A, you know, it just freshens you up a little. 55. Mal, you require change 116. Change is good. And the new people who had bad runs at the World Championship who will then stay in different hotels just so it feels like a different sort 76. of environment and a different... Lee, you require 86. ...different events. It's a dart at the ball to double his lead. 61. I'll come in. 
Now you require four. Break straight back and follow the theme of that last game. Game One thing I've the noticed between Mal's throw in that first few throws of that first leg, he was Third he leg was throwing a little first. softer. Game it on. was it was oh, please go in, please go in, and now he's got the beans out and out there. He's throwing them flat. There's no parabolic 18. arc. He is he is more direct, and that, and that saw him uh, win leg two. You see on the back of his shirt there the nickname the ball. We've got a couple of variations of that nickname in darts, but it's quite a nickname to live up to when you think of the other people that's had that sort of nickname. Terry Jenkins had 16. a very similar one, the the raging bull, and obviously are now world number one and world champion. Michael Smith, the bully boy. It's funny you should mention Terry Jenkins there because I've got a feeling 16. he's going the other way for the next two weeks. I think he's heading to Australia. So uh, while Mao's here, the other ball is going the other way. Bit of a ball swap. 100. The swapping of the balls. Indeed. He's going out there with Chunk Norris as well. So, uh... One hundred and eighty. Uh, yeah, you, you guys might know him as Chuck, but well, most of the players around him, we all know him as Chunk. Sixty. One of my good buddies, Alan Norris, on the circuit has been for a long, long time. He won't mind that mention. Fifty-five. Plateaued out a little now this game, hasn't it? Just start, sort of found its feet now after the first couple of legs. Eighty-five. Lee, you require one hundred and twenty-six. Forty-five. Cox is somebody now you who feels like he's improving. You mentioned he had that good run at the Challenge Tour just past weekend, and the last time he was down here in the Moda Super Series, it was a good week. Game but shot he's going to need leg. to keep improving because Mal Cumming is improving. The first tongue plus checkout of the week so far goes the way of Mal Cumming, and that leg is our first, first hold of Game throw on. for nine legs. I agree with you, actually. I think 100. Lee is actually improving, and I'm, and I'm, you know, being being London County captain as a, you know, a, a, a county with massive history. And I'm wondering, you know, but, you know, it's it's, it's 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 a very proud thing to be captains of of any team, and and your your sort of peers wanting you to be the captain. And I'm wondering whether being London's captain is is suiting him right down to the ground. Something he's very proud of. We saw on the graphic there at the very start when it says biggest achievement, he's asked 43. that to be the London County captain. He's very, very proud of that badge of honour that he's got there. And I think one of the first things when I ever met Lee Cox, I was told was, oh, he's London County captain. And then I think he told me he was London County captain about 17 times. Something he's extremely proud of. It, I, I, I agree. I think it makes him puff his chest out. And he when he's at other places, he feels he's here representing that London County team. And I, and I, and I like that about players. I like when they, they feel good about that. 99. Maybe if he gets through to Saturday night, we may see a bit of support come down from London down here to Portsmouth to cheer him on. It's not too far away. It's just a little trip down 62. the A3. Forty-two. Good response this from Lee Cox. I said he's going to need to improve because it felt like Mal Cumming was going that way. And solid leg, bullying Mal in this one. He's a long way back. One hundred. Lee you require twenty. Three clean darts. Fifteen. But remember what I said in leg number now you one. One hundred and fifty-three. If there is a little bit of a frailty for Lee Cox, he personally feels it's the doubles. He says he can score with any of them. He's proving that. One hundred and thirteen. Two one eighties. Two one forties. 
Interesting no way from coming to leave the tops there. Going for now trouble we're 11. 40. Unusual. Very old school. Unusual way to try and take out five there, starting on the 19s as well. But there was not comfortable darts then from Mal coming. 20. Better one with the last start, but Lee, you require no five. reward. A little snatchy, weren't they? But Lee gets another chance at double one. No score. Well, it was snatchy, it was pushy, now it was everything 20. but a properly thrown dart. But regardless of that, a leg that he probably gave up on not too long ago. Game shot he's ended on the fourth leg. Mal coming. And like you say, you said about his stats earlier, Mal coming. He knows how to win a tournament. He knows how to get... Fifth leg, it's Mal get, to throw first. Get into these positions. And, and now he's put himself in a position to, to take the match on his throw. Well, you mentioned it in the last game with Wesley Harms. You said it's not about averages, it's about the points. 59. And I think that's what we can see when we look at Mal coming and we look at his sort of form line. He's not throwing the highest averages of the players that are over in Australia taking part 100. in these DPA events. But he's always in the latter stages or winning them. Quarterfinals or beyond of pretty much every single event. And a lot of them, he's been lifting the 85. title. Eighty-five. He knows how to win. He does know how to win. I think his main adversary out there at the moment is a, is a fellow called Darren Pennell, who had a tour card. Uh, Cornwall counter player, I believe, at the time. And, and I, I had a couple of... I dipped my toe into the Pro Tours a couple of times back in, back in those COVID times because I was number one. And I sat with Darren, Darren a few times uh, at the Pro Tours. And he said he was heading out Australia bound. And uh, he's gone out there and picked his darts back up out there and it's going really well 45. as well. And I spoke to Mal about it and he said, yeah, I, I will get him soon. He, he keeps turning them over just lately in a few finals um, that they've been in out there in Australia. So 121. Who knows? We could see Darren Pennell back in the UK through the ADC route in Australia in the Oceanic region. Yeah, they are taking each other on an awful lot over there at the moment. I've combined four results so far between 100. them. 100. Now you're requiring 96. But it's always in the latter stages. There are two of the dominant forces out there. Mal could become a dominant force 88. here in the UK. He will come back. Three darts at double four for a 4-1 victory. 125. Mal, you require eight. So it's eight for Mal coming. A 4 1 win to open his account. No score. Always fluffed his lines. Lee, you require 71. Hardest one to hit is that first one to get you the points on the board. He had a bit of a nightmare. Trying to check out before. Game shot and on that the fifth one leg. will wake Lee him Cox. up from that nightmare. A nice little clean 71 finish there from Lee Cox. And they're the sort of shots that really build confidence and grow sixth confidence. Leg is Lee when to you throw can first. Take Game out on. those two dark combinations nice and clean. And as an opponent, when you're on the receiving end, they just get great. Yeah, little get under your skin, don't 100. they? 100. I think this is one of the things when we talk about Lee Cox becoming a better player recently. We talk about the evolution of what he's doing at the moment. I think this is one thing that you've got to say is an area he's improved on because I think before he'd have got on his own back a little bit. I don't think those missed shots 26. he'd have felt like that was his opportunity where now he's able to go carve out new opportunities rather than thinking his chance has come and gone. Yeah, I've, I, you know, I think that comes with age, though. I think as you 45. get older, you realise that you've been in that situation before that, that, that it's you stopping yourself. That's not even your opponent stopping you. So, um, you know, this this is why the likes of Luke Lillard, we saw win on, so, there are young people now with that ability and and they are able to forget it as fast as it happened as well. And that's the worrying thing for me. They're not even needing 46. the time and age because they're playing so much now. They're developing so quickly that, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things. But I agree, Lee, Lee has, has sort of 60. given that side of his game up a little more and, and, and letting the game flow and forgetting it as fast as it happened. He's been expression, do you play the board or do you play 100. the man? And I think with Luke Littler, 
I think there is no opponent. It's just all about Luke. I think with players like Lee Cox a year ago, I think his biggest opponent was himself. Mal, you require 170. And different people will approach the game in different ways, which is why it's so fascinating to to sit here and watch the Super Series and see it all unfold because we get a really good read on people because we're going to see 82. them. 82. Lee, you require In highs and lows, and we're going to see them throughout the week. Now this 110 now to save himself. Is he going 18? Yes, he is. Double 16. 78. Mal, you so require 88. So the door is ajar for coming. 88. He's got to go 18 balls, surely. You've got to go 18 balls, surely. He has. It's the bull's eye. And he Game. nails Shot. it, Mal Cumming. Mal what Cumming. a finish. Had three darts in his hand to win it in the previous leg. Let them go, but it's a 4-2 win for Mal Cumming. 81 average for him. An 80 for Lee Cox. A good game. The double stats there show the tale of the story. It's time for a break. And when we come back, we have Danny Lorby and Yuri Brower. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where Mal Cumming has beaten Lee Cox by four legs to two in our third match of the day. Game four, Danny Lauby for Yui Brewer with Matt and Scott. Thank you, Henry. Danny Lauby kicked off his campaign well in his opening game. A 4-1 victory over fellow left-hander Moreno Blom. Well, Yordi Brewer got himself in one of those battles, which was constant breaks of throw. But I think we're going to see a player's evolve in front of our eyes here this week. We've not seen much of Jordi Brewer. We know he's out playing at the moment on the PDC development tour. And he's doing quite well over in Holland at the moment at just 20 years old. He's taking on the man from America who has been picking up titles since 2008 when he won the... ADO first Youth Danny Championship. To throw first, game on. He's yet to pick up a title this side of the pond. He's got many over in America, but maybe this is the week for Danny Lauby, 52. who seems to be settling into the task now, because I think every time Danny Lauby plays, people refer back to those World Championship performances when he nearly beat Ryan Searle 57. at the World Championship, and then backed it up a year later when he played William O'Connor. 
I think everyone expected him to move on at 40. that point. But for me, it's that run to the semi-finals at the back end of last year with the World Masters that I think's the moment now we expect to see Daniel Albin move on to sort of that next level. Well, it, well, it, it sort of changed his life, that run, didn't it? Because now then he came over and, and he's, he's got management here now and he, he, he lives in the UK. And so I think there's an added pressure with taking that plunge and saying, right, I'm 60. giving up my kind of old life, which is where I was playing really great. And, and it doesn't mean that he isn't going to play great now. It just sometimes means he's going to take time to settle. And here we are. We're... We're, we're four months down the line or three months down the line and a lot has changed in that 12 weeks in his life. So he needs to be allowed to settle and he needs a chance to be able to shine again. I'm fortunate enough to know a lot of players that have made this 56. sort of switch. I think back to Kyle Anderson and recently uh, Danny Baggish who made the switch to move to the other side of the world. And 84, the Danny sacrifice Rafael, that that takes... It can't be understated. I know, and a UK player, 66. which I, I find quite funny, I'll say, well, wow, I've got to take a day off work and I might not get paid. And these guys have, have changed their whole life. They've they've, they've just taken the... 42, say Danny Danny Baggins, they've taken the biggest gamble of their life in, 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 in just Game up and sticks and, and coming Danny over. And, and you have to respect that. Damon Hetter's another one. It's just, and it's worked so successfully for him. Um, Second but it Yuri took him to time first. to settle. Game on. And we, we talk about these players that it's worked successfully for because these are the players that the viewers would know. But 100. for every one of those, there's probably 30 or 40 people it just didn't work out for. And that's the risk. Well, Australian 100. one for me is Rob Modra, probably. He was one that, you know, had a superb amount of talent, did exactly the same thing. But unfortunately, it didn't quite work for him. 140. These guys really settling 59. into this game now and the scores are coming along. A little bit standoffish for the first one, but now here we go with Yuri. 140. He's number four, Yuri, in the Dutch national ranking at the moment. So in Holland, 94. they sort of... Have a, Yuri Rapal, and that 121. Sort of national singles tournament every so often. I think I think it might be around ten a year, but and uh, and that's where they pick 53. the national team from from the national ranking. And Yuri sat there at number four in the Dutch national ranking currently. Sixty six. Yuri requires sixty eight. So good start to a career for this young man. We're we looking to show more of what he's 36. got. Thirty six. Danny Rapal, one hundred and two. In the mode of Super Series, it's Lorby now. Game shot in the second leg. Danny what camera Lowby. work that was to keep up with that. Wow, wow, wow. Well done to the team next door. 102. Third leg is Danny to throw first. Game on. Two and a half seconds right there. I'm liking what I'm seeing from Danny Lowby. There's 79. a much more seriousness about him today. There's a lot more focus I've been here before when Danny lowby has been on the stage and he's been looking around the room and looking up at the roof and just very distracted in his approach. But 100. Not here. Very focused. Heads down. Delivering some good darts. I think 40. As well, when we look at Young Brewer, the one thing we can say already is he's preferring the pace of Danny Lowby rather than the slower pace that he had with Wesley Harms. And when we look at those sort of big wins he's had, the biggest 45. one I can bring up is King Barry. Pace. The pace of King Barry would have suited because it's very similar to what we're seeing here with Danny 80. Lowby. Yeah, if anything, Danny's just a, maybe a little bit too quick here for Brow because... You know, you can see there he's having to slow himself down a little bit. Although he's 16. not slow, I'm afraid when you compare yourself to the likes of Lowby, you know, Ricky Evans springs to mind. And one hundred uh, game between them two would be absolute commentator's nightmare. One hundred. Danny, you require forty-four. 
Might be a dream for Lauby and the nightmare for Brewer. 34. Yuri requires 76. First miss starts at the double there for Danny Lauby. He's got to be all over this, hasn't he? One dart at tops. 36. Just delayed yeah, slightly, 10. didn't he? Just had that little too much thought about it. Well, he's chasing around the board Game again now. But leg. Danny Lauby. Manages to convert in 21 darts. But he won't worry about the amount of darts. What he will be worried about is the Fourth three is Yuri to throw on first. his side on. in the legs box. And the first sign of frustration there from Brewer. 36. It translates into 36 at the opening of this leg. Danny Lowby fully in control. 21. When you've got that lead, you can afford a, a bad visit like 21. It's okay. 125. Now, what's impressed me there with, with Brewer is that he missed by a mile with that first one, but then came back and hit two trebles with the second one, the second two dot, and, and it shows his character because he's three nil down. The easiest thing there he could have done was hit another five 46. and another one. So it shows pedigree that does for me. It may not be his time right now at this match, but like you said, he could be a danger man as he settles into this group. I think the way I'm going to describe what I can see through looking through his previous form is explosive. He's not going to be consistently brilliant, 50. but what he's going to do is he's going to come up against somebody and you think, oh, we expect a result here. And then Brewer's going to come up and throw 58. a 97, 98 average and call shocks. A, a, fl a, a switch will flick in his head is what's going to happen. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Uh, and he, he will go up there and, and not Yuri really worry so much as he has been. He will let his guard down. He will drop his armour and then just, just throw with freedom. Danny require 130. The ball. 105. Just seen Yuri a match one 24. on the ball. We nearly saw a second game. One on the ball in a row. This wasn't Yuri's no preferred score. double. He hit that double. Danny requires 16, 25. Trying to leave the tops, but it's 25 now. He in turn, double six. 19. Yuri requires 24. I think for 24. a rapid throw player like Danny to change it up and keep moving around the board gives him more chance to hit it, in my opinion. 12. Danny requires six. Well, the story of this game for Brewer is going to be on those doubles, eight darts chance to try and save this match four <laughs> he nearly got to save himself Yuri on the stage he nearly fell off the back of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah very Dirk van diving boater like that was almost Six. uh yeah danny you require two unsettled him a little actually i he missed the double lowry for a four nil win no score Nobody wants it. They would be, they would be saying six. in the pub if this was happening in the pub. He don't want it. I think we're just seeing a slight lack of experience no here from Brewer. Missed Danny opportunities, the frustration, the stage presence to nearly fall off and Devon Dudley himself through that front table. No score. But Lauby can't close it out. Yuri requires six. This is what we call an average busting leg. Game shot in the fourth leg. They're going to get Yuri more legs Brewer. to put it right. I would dare say that that will be the longest leg you'll see this week. A 32 Fifth dart leg, it's leg Danny there to from Brewer. First. Game on. But the most important thing for him is he is still in this match. 140. Yes, he is. And... 55. Can he just find that bit of freedom to throw with? Those days when you throw with freedom, they're lovely 94. days. It's just, yeah, it's just, it, it's effortless. It's effortless and everything goes where you want it to go. It's just, 
it's so hard to describe if it hasn't one. happened to you. And, and on the biggest stage that it happens, I think sometimes you chase that for the rest of your life in every game that you get up there. It's the it's the craziest but loveliest of feelings, you know. It's it's superb. Ninety-seven. One hundred. Blau beat. Just missed three handfuls of darts Danny to win this match. And he's turned this round well. 56. So, Mara still chase him. Want to leave 57. it handy. 57. Danny requires 68. Not meant to be. Where's he going with this? 52. 12 for tops. 28. Yuri Raquel. He's not been overly successful on so far today. Well, you think he was very successful on the doubles at the opening part of this match. 98. Danny Raquel. Can 40. he finally get the job done? Game. He does. Shot. And the and match. It's on tops. Danny Lauby. And it was that leg in leg number four that probably killed that a bit for Danny Lauby in terms of the averages. But the most important thing there for Danny Lauby is it's another win and another big win. A second 4-1 victory of the day. Legs often plays its part in Group A. They could come important come the end of this group. Coming up next, we've got Lee Cox taking on Moreno Blom. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night for a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team off the telly here at our purpose built venue in Portsmouth every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. For all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up, and the action gets underway from 7.30 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. And the latest ticketing news is that you can book your tickets for every single week here during Series 4 here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Head over to dartshop.tv and if it's anything like the atmosphere on Saturday evening, you're going to have a good night guaranteed. Well, next up for us, it's Moreno Blom up against Lee Cox. Watching this one, Scott and Matt. Yes, thank you, Henry. As we end... It's our second run through now. Everybody will have had two games after this one. 
group is starting to take shape. Lads just having their final practice darts. First leg, it's Lee to throw first. Game on. Our referee, Justin Bradshaw. Keep an eye on proceedings. For the first five games, you haven't even noticed he's there, and that's a sign of a good referee for me. He said something to me off air there 57. that I think is just so fitting. And he says that I just think a bit nervy, a bit edgy this morning from people. A lot of sort of new faces in the groups. I think with 100. that as well, I don't think we've got a realistic favourite. Yes, we have a favourite, Wesley Harms. Of course, we've got a favourite. We've got to have a favourite. 57. But even Wesley Harms has got a lot of question marks over him. But but we will we will know after six games more about once everybody's played two to, to how they're settling in. 60. Um, I think, I think uh, you know, we, we did mention it right at the top of the show that, you know, to get off the mark and, and get your first win under your belt, then you're not chasing, if you know what I mean. I think what, once you get a first win, you know what it feels like to win up there. And, and, and like you say, you're not looking at the group going, oh, look 100. at me at the bottom. I'm, I'm chasing, I'm chasing. And I, and I know that I felt a little bit like that when I was here, that I was then having to chase. Yeah, I don't know anything about that, to be honest. So. But, <laughs> when you look at this group and you look at the group dynamics, who is the top dog? You'll be in that practice room looking around. Game shot in the first Lee leg. Cox Lee Cox could be the top dog as he takes out another Tumpler's finish. Second leg is Moreno to throw first. Game on. But you'd be in that practice room now and you'd be looking around and going, right, who is the guy to beat? And to be honest with you, I don't know who that would be. Who would be the guy in this group where you'd say, that's the guy I need to beat? And because you don't look around the room and see that, if you don't see it with your eyes, the brain instantly thinks, maybe it's me. 140. And all six players could be in that mode. Yeah, no, very much so. I think, and I also think... I also think when you're at the top of the group, 100. you're starting to think who's the player to beat if you're in your top two or three. But if you're in the bottom two or three, like I found myself 96. a couple of weeks ago, you, you just try to make sure you don't beat yourself and stop yourself. You, you, don't, you don't have a chance, like I say, to, to have too much going through your head and trying to work out what you're doing wrong. You don't have a chance to see the replays back. Or, you know, are you rocking at the wrong time? Are you releasing at the wrong time? You have to go home and do all that. So, 83. Um, Lee, you've just got to try and play your way through it if you're at the bottom end. And, and we saw the week that we did where Richie Parkin couldn't get a win. And then when he got one, oh, my God, he was away. 57. But it was too late Rainey for him. The group 42. was over. Game shot in the second leg. Moreno Blom. Good start from both players. 15 dart as a pace to hold the throw, forcing your opponent into that Third 12 leg dart leg. Throw first. Game on. G Parkin, someone I expect to see returning in phase four. 81. Looking forward to seeing who we get here in series four. 180. Partnerships with the ADC and Australia now and ADC Europe. We're going to see some new faces. Along with all your old favourites. One of my favourites is coming up this week, actually. 57. Robert Rickwood in Group C. He is a laugh a minute. Oh, don't start on it. He got me on Friday in the challenge tour. Dear, oh dear. I couldn't get away from him. He wanted to talk to me all day. No, he's a, a, a great character, isn't he? He's a great character. And uh, uh, the game is full of characters. And like you say, the, the ADC movement now is really starting to move, isn't it? I know ADC Europe is, is now starting to happen where, you know, it's going to increase. And, and when players 100. get to see, they get their chance on the stage here in front of the cameras. 
you know, it is only going to continue to, to improve, 37. particularly in Europe, where, where dance 40. is massive at the moment. Germany, Holland, Belgium. Game um, shot on the third Exactly. It just, we, we only saw at the weekend how big it's getting in Belgium. It, it, uh, it's, there's no way, you know, the oceanic region is, is, is going to really first. come into on. fruition with, with the likes of Mal coming over and 140. showing. So it's only going one way for me, the ADC. This game's only going one way at the moment. That's up. Good start. Good standard. 15, 15, 54. 13. The winning legs so far. The Cox. Well over 100. And Blom is heading in the same direction. We've had a game so far today where players have been unable to hold their throw. Well, what they're doing in this one, one is holding them. 180. Sheer class and quality. 134. Really a, if we were watching this on Australia, this would be a ripper, mate. 140. Moraine require 80. Keeps improving. 77. We talk about the pace Lee suiting require people. I think this pace is suiting Lee Cox. He's throwing that little bit quicker, giving him a little less time to think. And here we are. He's had a little stop, had a little Brett, and he, he's not thrown as quick as he had been, and just going around in the circle. Moreno, you require 10. And, uh, it, was a, it was a bad dart for him to start the combination, but only one left. Game shot on the Blom, fourth and leg. And he takes Moreno it, Blom. last dart. And you find that with a rat-tat-tat player. They find that they feel their way down, don't they, to the double? Absolutely. Fifth feel leg is lead was the word you first. said there. That Game is on. the one. Feel. Because a lot of the pacey players, they're not aiming the darts. They're throwing on feel. So with those sort of more awkward situations, that's where they're going to just edge into the double. He got there 95. with the last dart. And again, it was a 15 dart leg that would have forced Lee Cox to have gone out in 12. Second 180 of the match, fourth of the day. 100. Just like I was saying, he's, he's, the pace is suiting him. Blom's faster pace means that he's out of his way and Cox is just coming in and just letting him go. He left the stage disappointed 16. after that opening game when he lost to Malcolm. In. And you could see how visually frustrated he was. 59. Lee that will be down to the missed opportunities he had in that game. He realistically should have been a lot closer, if not won that match. And we said during 18. that game, one of the things that we're seeing with Lee Cox is a little bit more of evolution, where he's able to carve out new opportunities rather than ruining the ones 60. that have been and gone. And this is more evidence 81. to that situation. Averaging nearly 109 at the moment. And that's pretty impressive, no matter where 41. you play. That really is impressive. 93. Well, average, and he's in a situation where 40. he's in a level game. It's only two apiece. Game shot on the was fifth his leg. his first missed Lee start Cox. on the double. It was quite a way off, but a great adjustment there for Lee Cox to put himself now just one leg away from the match. But that was also Six an important double for his mindset because he's, he's running 105 average to so then being 3-2 down, running 105 average. Your, your mind then starts to tell you, what have I got to do to, to, to win legs here? And, and it's 16. down to yourself hitting those those doubles. And, I, and I've got to, what I've noted just so far this morning with, with Lee Cox, he, he, he's dangerous to himself if he has three darts in his hand at a double. If he only gets one at it as a part of a combination, it seems to suit him better. Well, it's that processing time, isn't it? When you set a double up from the second here, taking the darts out, walking back, all this is just coming back to throw at that double. One hundred and forty. And it's no longer throwing a set of darts it's a hit or miss situation do i win the leg or do i not and the psychology of everything completely changes at that point 25 but this is a game that looks like it's going to go all the way and probably rightly so despite the difference in the averages moreno blom has been extremely strong on his own throw winning both of these legs in just 15 darts 90 
he doesn't look like a player that's only picked up one leg just before this match. So he's not going away. 45. Moreno, you require 130. Cox is now visibly disappointed in some of his visits, and that's affecting 19. his average. An interesting route to go on the 130 there. Traditionally, people would go for the 20s. He's completely eliminated the option there of having the dart of the ball by going for the 19s. But with Cox back on 2-3-1, he's just decided to try and Marini set up his favourite double, which is clearly going to be tops. Game shot and the six Or is he a James Marino Wade double blonde. 10 man because he's a lefty? Either or, he was very successful on double 10 that time. Seventh and final leg. It's Lee to throw first. Game on. Cox is now truly, truly focused on leg seven. 140. That looked easier to hit a 180 than it was a 140 for me there. 140. As for that visit. This is good. This is a battle. 45. First blink by Lee Cox. Can Moreno step in? 100. He has recently won a WDF ranking title, which brings its own element of confidence with it as well. Yeah, yeah, so I've heard. 60. <laughs> so I've heard. It's ideal if you win one on the Sunday and then come here on the Thursday is what I've heard. 60. Wouldn't happen to know who done that, Matt, would you? Did it happen a week ago, I think, wasn't it? That happened to someone. It possibly did, 16. and he came in flying, a fair play. But it's Blom now has turned the darts around with his scoring. 83. That's left a glimmer of hope for Cox, that last dart. That's the blocker. He needs to come out. Really needs a treble now. 96. Moreno require 118. That's a good treble to leave a two-dart finish, so. 94. That's the difference, isn't it, there? A two-dart finish or a three-dart finish. Indeed. Cox. Where will he go here? He'll go tops, tops with that. Surely he has to. There's one. 80. Oh, just underneath. Moreno require 24. This will feel like a bit of a pinch if you're 12. Lee Cox because he's been running over the 100 average all the way he through, but 20. three darts, nowhere near the double. That one's wide Game. and handsome, sure. but and the, the second match, isn't. Lee Cox. It's Lee Cox closes out a terrific game against Moreno Bloom, 4-3. It was running big averages all the way to those last couple of legs when it got a little bit of tense, nervous headache. Four from seven, the story of the game here for Lee Cox. That's what's probably won him the game. We head into a short break, and when we return, we will have Wesley Harms against Mal Cumming.
Welcome back. Where after where before the break, Lee Cox got the better of Moreno Blom by four legs of three. We're now about to conclude the second round of fixtures for our day. And it's going to see Wesley Harms in action. He takes on Mel Cumming, and this is going to be watched by Scott and Matt. Yeah, so here we go. It's game six of the day. And I think I can probably say that these are the probably the two of the more experienced players in this group. Danny Lowby would be the other one who you would say, but I think these guys have been around in a while. Here we go, Wesley, 38 years old. I remember him being a, a younger man on the video circuit. Den Harm is where he's from in Holland. And here's Mal at the age of 47. Hometown Melbourne. He'd probably say that he's first a late blossomer to, to this game, Mal, if game you spoke on. to him. Next Wesley will have the darts in this one. When you talk about the 135. We, we talk about Wesley Harms in terms of experiences in the ceiling that they've reached and how far they've gone. You'd say 76. that goes the way of Wesley Harms. If you talk about recent form in terms of being a winner, that one goes down to Mal Cumming. And if you're talking about who's playing the most darts, you've got to go to Danny Lauby, who seems to be playing darts near every 45. night of the week at the moment. They were here in the UK, really trying to make the most of it. But that's one of the things in the UK we don't really truly appreciate. The amount of darts we have here in the UK and the what's on our doorstep i remember when danny baggish was over he was staying not too far from my house and he messaged me he says do you fancy going to this darts tournament i'm like well, you're about, it's an hour away i'm not going there but to them like they'll travel four five six hours just for a local game i remember i remember talking to steve brown i'm a big speedway fan and, and steve Where's brown was over here another one american that came over here and and lived in the uk with in the early pdc days and i remember talking to him and um, I spoke to him a lot online around the time I was starting and, and getting experience. Now and he said that he would travel four hours to like a Super League game in, in America. It's just we, we, we just don't know. You know, we get to a weekend and I bet you most people can find a, a tournament a weekend for, for a few quid for within, you know, an hour, hour and a half of their house, which is, which is what other countries miss. Australia is a very similar situation. 56. Now you require 40. I think they call them interstate tournaments, I think. 35. Wesley require 20. How big could that moment be? I know it's only the opening leg of this match. That was an opportunity to break there. Game shot in the first leg. Wesley Indeed. Harms. Indeed. Another thing I've always found interesting. <laughs> A little sorry about that, mate. But Second leg is Mal to first. So you first. Didn't get it, Game on. He, he gets it in the end, but... Uh, another thing I find with Wesley, he never has his face is not 90 degrees 58. to the board as part of his throw. If you watch him here, he seems to be looking to the other side and both his eyes is, is, is right over to one side because he's sort of, his face isn't square with the board. A lot of players try to make their face square with the board and 60. He, he doesn't do that. He's like the Superman X-ray eyes out the side of his eyes, sort of th out, of, out the side of his face, sort of thing. One full range of motion of the eyes in in show there. How do you feel about the sorry for winning a leg approach? We, something we discuss quite often in the commentary box. One hundred and forty. I don't know about you. You ever? I've never saw you do that to me when you were doing it to me. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry if I if I rob a leg. It's not my fault. One hundred. You know, it's, if if you've had a go and. There are legs that you do think it, but I would never show it there. I'd say afterwards, maybe, but, yeah. you know, let's, let's get the game done and dusted and, you know. 95. I, yeah. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's, I, I remember the, the, the late, great Eric Bristow commenting uh, on, on a Sky thing one time. And, and that was about players cuddling each other after. He says, I don't want to see this cuddling and nambi pamby. I don't want to see any of that. He said, I want to see the needle. I want to see him having a go at one another. 
45? And, you know, we've all seen Mario clips from back in the days in the 80s where, you know, you could see the players just didn't get on. Game shot in the second leg. Well, that's Mal coming. Brilliant there from Mal coming. You just missed three darts in the last leg to get a break of throw. To then come back and take out Third 106 finish. First. Great response. Great reaction. And it was a polished finish as well. It was the... Was that a... I'll show you, you're sorry. It could well have been. I don't 100. know. 100. There are many things that dart players think in those sort of situations as well. Like... There's certain things like, you know, when people shake your hand 62. and they'll say all the best. That's I love that because in my head, I instantly go, but you don't want my best. Ideally, what happens is they want you to play really bad and then turn around and go, oh, didn't really happen there for you, mate. But there's certain things that you can do or say in those situations. Do you know one of the most ominous things you can do in a handshake? 46. Shake someone's hand, look at them in the eye and say... Good luck. Just think about what that means. Like, you're not saying all the best or have a good one or any of this. You're saying good luck. Why, why do you need luck? Why am I wishing you good luck? Because I already think I'm going to beat 100. you. One hundred. So good luck in trying to beat me with this. The one that always, the one that always gets me is is, is like the limpy, floppy, handshakey. I don't really want to do it. Oh, we've got to do this at the start. Ugh. I'm not into that. Just get hold of the man's hand and give him a good handshake or. Or if you don't want to do a handshake, do the fist pump. But the, the the kind of fist pump thing is a little bit more impersonal than the handshake for me. I 100. think you have to have a hand. I'm old fashioned. You have to have a handshake at the start. You know what I mean? If somebody does something good and does a lead and dart, like, yeah, give him a fist pump during it if that's what you want to do, if that's 60. your way. But, um, that's the you know, I just like a good solid handshake. I think it's the old fashioned me, I think. I'm with you. One at the start, one at the end. Game shot and the third well, leg. Well, apologise for winning Wesley the last Arms. leg. Well, there's going to be any apology for that one. That was a good leg from Wesley Arms. A 15 data with a 101 finish. Fourth leg, it's Mal to throw first. To retaliate back to the 106 that Mal come and hit in the last. These players are feeding off each other. 85. They are. And I'm, I'm going back to a conversation that we had in the last ma last match about you stood in a player's room and who's the one to beat in 100. here. And I got a feeling these two guys may have been stood in there thinking that and the way that they're playing here would suggest that fact. 100. There's a few expressions in like that, isn't there? Like, um, oh, if you don't see a tornado moving, it's moving towards you and all those sort of things. And I think that's very similar with the darts practice room, like I said in the last one, if you can't pick out the guy to beat, maybe it's you. Yeah, I've never looked at it like 100. that. I've, I've always looked at it that I'm always the guy to beat. I, I'm always the guy to beat in my own head. Really, it's it's me doing what I do, and if I do what I do, then every room that I walk into, I feel that I'll be okay. If I don't 45. do what I don't do, then I'm the problem. So I always try to keep everything with me, really. The biggest opponent you'll ever face is yourself, isn't it? In any sort of sport, especially this one, where you are on your own. We don't have many people that have mentorship or coaches. Certainly not during 100. events, anyway. Maui requires 76. But, but back in the day, you know, it wasn't such a big individual sport as it is now, in my opinion, you know, you, you got into darts through playing through teams and stuff. 72. So Wesley requires as the games 76. develop, like we're talking about with the ADC now and, and, and varying other sort of ways of playing, I'm just going to wait here and see if he takes this out in two. Game and he shot does. on the fourth leg. Wesley That's a classy finish once again from Wesley as he heads on towards that 100 average. Fifth leg is Wesley no, to throw not first. too shabby Game either. On. He's there with him on a 90. And that first leg could come and bite him on the backside for Mr. Cumming. You mentioned about the evolution of the game, and I think it's very 55. apt because we talk about where darts is now and where it's came from. But if we look at what darts was before, we can say darts was a game, a hobby 100. to some people as a profession. Now it's a viable career. 
And I think we see that change a lot as well when we see how people approach it. We're seeing a lot of people turn up now with with headphones in and sort of keeping themselves to themselves 100. because all they care about is the, the job at hand and getting those results. And I think anyone sort of 30 down is sort of more in that road now. Yeah, they're, they're looking out of the box. And it's not just you can make a living at it with being on the board as you so successfully done. With with your little enterprises, you, you, you've you've 85. you've turned it into a job for yourself because of your love of the game, and I think that's great. Um, and there's a few people out there doing similar to you. You know, you you look at Phil Bars and, and and so on. So uh, who who is is reporting and and catching up with every up to date dark match that's going on in the entire universe? It feels like. One hundred and thirty-five. People want to see what's now going on in the darting world nowadays. The interest is there. You've just got to create an interest that wants to follow you and your pitch on how it how it works, which is why I think your stuff Wesley with your Red Gear TV stuff works so good. That's the bullseye. Game. For the match, Shot. Wesley Harms match. wraps Wesley it up. Harms. Four legs to one. A 1 2 6 on the ball. A 1 0 1 finish as well. Two 180s. An average of 97.67. We said we expect him to get better and stronger as the day and as the group goes on. Well, that could be the very best there from Wesley Harms. He now puts himself onto four points, joining Danny Lauby, who we're going to see coming up next against Lee Cox. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series. It feels like just five minutes ago, me and Scott Mitchell up on the balcony previewing the session's action. We're six games deep. This is what's happened so far in this session at the Modus Super Series. Danny Lauby, the perfect start for him. Two wins from two, but two different types of victories as well. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's had to scrap them out. But the, at the end of the day, as a player, you're going, a victory is a victory. And it's points on the board. We, we spoke about averages earlier. And as long as you've got those points, points on the board, early doors, that just settles you in. As to Wesley Harms, we know the quality that he has. But we haven't really seen him on a televised arena for a little while now. So we didn't quite know where the form guide was. Built into it with his first game and that last performance there. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I do know that he has had a last 16 in January, back in January in the uh, Dutch Open. So um, he's not totally coming into it, sort of uh, not in form. But yeah, he doesn't know the form here. And uh, he, he, that, was, that was a tremendous, it was his finishing was superb. It was always been the mark of his game. And uh, he's found that early doors here, which is pretty ominous for everybody else in Group A. Kamal feel a little bit unlucky. Absolutely. I think, I think that first leg got away there, where Wesley did apologise for sort of taking the leg, but he didn't apologise for the others. As for Moreno Blom, he hasn't picked up a point yet. Can he be a little bit unlucky when you consider the performances that he's put in? 
Yeah, I think so. I think he's he's just trying a little bit too hard when it comes to that moment of, of, of taking a double. But he's one of those that's going to flourish into this group. I think three days for him in this group will suit him. It will give him time to settle. Next up, it is Danny Lauby in action up against Lee Cox. What's been your assessment of his day so far? Look, I think if he hits a double, then he's a dangerous, dangerous opponent because he's always scoring. So uh, if he can keep that scoring going and then just add a few doubles to it, he will remain top of the group. Ready to see some more darts? Absolutely. Let's watch some more darts then. It's Lauby against Cox and Scott's going to make his way down to join Matthew Edgar. Thank you, Henry. Lee Cox, Dan Lauby. Lauby, the man who recently reached the semi-finals of the World Masters event. Went out 6-5 to Wesley Plazier, who went on to win the title of that event. Taking on the man who is the London County captain, Lee Cox. The man who also has recent semi-finalist form himself. That coming in the PDC Challenge Tour, where he was... Unfortunate not to make it all the way through to the final. Two men who are on the increase, on the improve, and brings an interesting thought and conversation first to mind as well. To throw first, game on. When you think about what age is suitable for peak darts performance. 140. Most people would suggest... It's around that mid-30s area, which is back in the middle of these two. Danny Lauby, 30. Lee Cox, 39. 45. Luke Littler would have something different to say about that. The 16-year-old, who's the current champion now of the Moda Super Series. 140. Super Series 3 on Saturday. And then Peter Wright, Glenn Durrant. They would probably 100. argue the opposite. Winning titles in their late 40s. 81. The one thing that could be said is age isn't a barrier for this sport. Improvement can come at any point. 60. He can he seems to be getting his better results and better performances the closer he gets to 40. 60. 41. Danny, you require 80. A slow start here for Lee Cox. Danny Lowby doesn't do much slow. Game shot in the first leg. Danny Lowby. He's not started this game slow either. A 15 data. Little nod of approval there towards Lee Cox. Second who's leg, it's Lee to throw first. Probably Hang said on. something along the lines of good shot, good leg. But one thing I like there about Danny Lowby is he didn't 14. take his eyes off of where he wanted them to be. He didn't make eye contact with Lee Cox. He is in his own zone today. And this is good 100. to see from Danny Lowby. Yeah, and he's been here before and he knows how important a good start to a group is. He's probably 100. having the dream start today. 58. Nice to hear from Raymond Smith as well. Coming in on Twitter this morning. You can get in touch with that yourself. You see all the tags in the bottom of your screen there. At MSS Darts. Raymond Smith. 100. The champion of Super Series number two. He scooped the £20,000, put himself on the roll of honour of just three people so far, Conan Whitehead, 81. Series 1, Raymond Smith and now Luke Littler. One hundred and twenty-five. Supporting his fellow countryman, Mal Cumming, and whoever else may be joining us from over that partnership with Australia. 56. Lee coming weeks throughout Series 4. And that really is an interesting development for me. It really is. It, uh, I know that 96. darts down there isn't quite as big as here um, because it's not... 174. It, like you say, it was a pub game here, which Lee is why it's so popular. 40. And there's, there's that many pubs in the UK, so there's lots of dartboards. 
Good pressure shot that from Game Dan Lowby, but Lee Cox, Lee Cox says, what pressure? As yeah. He gets it with a second dart. A big one seven four three big trebles Third there from Dan Danny Lowby. He did all Give he could in that situation. He wasn't able to shake Lee Cox. Yeah, he was up for the challenge. 92. On that occasion, Cox. We fear he's, feel he's got to find that 100 average scoring again. To trouble. 140. Lowby early doors in Group A. 60. One hundred and eighty. The first player to reach a gate. Call it a gate because when you do a tally, you do the one hundred and four dashes, and on the fifth one, you cross it through. It looks like a little gate, like a five-bar gate on a farm. I get that. That works for me. One hundred. Never heard it do that. That's good. Good stuff, mate. I like that. One hundred and forty. Lee require eighty one. According to Lee Cox, this is his strength, his power scoring, and well, it's on display here. A potential Game eleven data. A great leg Lee there Cox. for Lee Cox. The best leg of the day so far. And that is to break the throw of Dan Lowby, Fourth a man is who is two first. from two Game on. so far. And both of those were four one successes. He will not be able to do that again in this match. 140. And I'm seeing a more relaxed Lee Cox here. That last throw was like he was in his armchair. 125. I've seen Lee Cox play with aggression before. I've never seen him play with controlled aggression. And I think that's what we're seeing here. A, a lot more control in his emotions. I mentioned earlier on... and. One hundred and four. If he missed an opportunity in the past, it would lag. And if he missed an opportunity, he wasn't able to carve out new ones. Eighty five. I wouldn't call it I, I'd call it controlled confidence actually, as as much as aggression. And he's just I remember Phil the power tailor saying I don't try to do anything, but I'll keep my Opponent under pressure with the scoring and making him have to hit because they can't always hit. One if I can put them into position where they got to always hit, then that makes life easier for me when they don't. And I think that we forget that that sometimes is what the game is about. 94. I think in Lee tennis they refer to, refer to as a scoreboard pressure. Fifty-six. No real study Daniel that's happened 44. yet in darts to suggest if scoreboard pressure is a thing or if it isn't. Game shot on the fourth leg. Danny Lowby. But the scoreboard at the moment reads two apiece, and it's another quality game. And Lee Cox just seems to be getting fifth leg brought Danny into these at the first. moment. If game you remember on. the last game, Lee Cox, when he took on Moreno Blom, there was running over a hundred average for pretty much most of the match. Ninety-five. He seems to be getting drawn into it again. There's something about Lee Cox that seems to bring out the best in people. And maybe it is, like we've mentioned already, that pace. 44. One hundred. Really is a quality, 140. quality match. People settling in here in game seven. 174. Day one of group A. Well, Dan Lowby has not recorded one in the 180s in this match, but that is his second 174. 140. Danny require 132. He's used that 174 to set himself up on a finish on two occasions now. 60. Can't shake off Lee Cox. One 
100. Danny requires 72. A couple of times Cox has kept himself in it with the last dark treble, but it's game shot on the fifth Lowby leg. And he Danny Lowby scrunches his fist there as he walks to the board. He knows that's an important double and a good 72 shot as well. Sixth leg is lead to throw first. Game on. Both doubling very well. 75% check out for Danny 96. Lowby here and 50% for Lee Cox is not shabby by anybody, any stretch of the imagination. I'm nodding here because that first start, 100. good recovery to get that treble 20, but at the end of that leg, Lee Cox gave him a fist bump, and for the first time, Dan Lowby stood at the back of the stage doing something I call meerkatting, which is where you stand at the back 100. looking around and looking around the room. He broke his focus for the first time, and he ended up coming back and throwing a low dart. How key could that moment 100. be? 100. In what was a genuine gesture, going, you know, well done, mate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. 135. And the brilliance of Lee Cox. Both players now 101 the average. 77. Lee, you require 90. But Danny will have the throw if it does go to the last leg. Fifty. Again, a good dart past that 100. low first one. Lee, you require forty. Tops for Cox, and this is where I felt he was struggling earlier. Ten with three darts in his hand, he's a danger to himself. Real chance here. Not now. 56. He can't play this safe. Lee, you require 30. He has to come at this and throw at this like any normal double. Players can get a bit safe on this because they don't want to come inside. That's a little bit awkward. He's going to have to move. No score. Danny requires 68. He will 68. wonder how that did not go in. Lowry will not be bothered one iota if he takes this 68. It's tops again. 48. Lee, you Missed, require 30. So Cox will get back. Surely he has to be braver. He quite duly was. Sometimes changing it up is as good as anything. Game shot and on the And it was this play. time for Lee, Lee Cox. Cox. It was this time for Lee Seven Cox. Seven-man final leg. It's Danny to throw He'll first. He'll be saying, why didn't Game I go on. in first time round? I think from the reaction as well, you can tell the, the nerves in the shot. He just squeezed 16. it into that single seven and squeezes it into the double four. But it's all about this leg now, and he'll be wanting to kick off well and try and punish the first visit there of Dan Lowby, who's not able to hit a treble. That makes this extremely interesting. Talk about scoreboard pressure. 57. Scoreboard pressure was applied to Lowby, and Cox has broken the throw already. And we'll continue to do so. 100. Lowry needs a double treble visit now to just get back on terms. 140. And that's exactly what he's done. Good reactive game, this one. Good match play. 60. Who can hold their nerve? Lowby to keep that 100% record going. 60. All he's known so far today is winning. A treble from now on in in that reg segment is going to be vital. 85. And Cox does it again with his last dart. But Lowby has a better chance of setting up. Will he stay there? 136. No, he didn't. Came Need out. require 116. So... You feel this has to go. He gets a dart, a match dart. Game. And that's Shot. all he needs. Lee Cox. Cox has wrapped it up with a 116 finish. A fantastic performance there from both players. A game made with good pace, good spirits, but it's gone the way 
of the London County Captain who dishes up Dan Lowry's first defeat of the day. Coming up next, we've got Jordi Brewer taking on Mal Cumming. told you series four is going to be the best one yet and we've already seen some early indications that the stand is going to be as good as ever lee cox getting the better of danny lowell being a last leg decider both players averaging over 90 in a 116 checkout to get the job done for the london county captain next up for us is yuri brewer up against mal coming and watching this one in the commentary box it's scott and matt yeah thanks henry nice mal coming comes to the board here been a little unlucky, the result with the last one. Young Yuri still trying to get his first points on the board in Group A. We have a little information passed to us that Vincent van der Voort is mentioning, uh, mentoring young Brower. And he actually worked in Vincent's dart shop. So he couldn't First find a better Yuri mentor than that. First. Game on. To start in your young career. It's an ideal job as well, isn't it? If you want to play darts, then work in a dart shop. When the shop's not busy, you can crack the arrows out and have a bit of a throw. If I, if I remember back, didn't a certain Mr. Chisnell and Mr. 100. Bunton do something very similar? They did up at Carl Shop up in St. Helens. 139. I often used to think one of the best jobs for a dart player, especially in the UK, was obviously a postman as well. 140. You'd finish the day nice and early and you'd have the afternoon to practice. I think we all know a good 45. dart playing postman in our areas, don't we, really? I think everybody's got one. Well, they get home earlier than the misses, and it's like, what do they do? They'll just crack the darts out and get some practice in. 
52. Mal, you require 121. Low dart there from the order. He'd have been looking at the 18s with that last one. 89. Good thinking there from Mal coming. You saw his eyes just flick to the side where the scoreboard is just to see what Ian Brewer was on. 99. Ops. To Mal, leave himself on. 32. The double 16. The way his darts have just kicked to the right there, that's just made it awkward. He's going to have to come right and up. 16. Gone for the lower Yuri end. Yuri requires 66. That was always going to be problematic with the flights in the way. A lot of material there between himself and that double. This is a clean shot from Game Yordi. Game shot on the first leg. And that's Yuri all he Brewer. needs, the one dart of the double. And that is a holder throw there that's going to feel a bit like a break. Second leg is Mal to Yeah, Mal first. uses a... Game on. A more solid flight, doesn't he? It's an all-in-one flight, which we're seeing used more and more. 16. And not a lot of giving them when you put them right on the wire. You tend to sometimes get a slight more deflection 55. than anything else. So he couldn't go through them. He would have liked to have stood where he was stood and put the two on the wire, but you can't go through them. So he had to move and 16. the adjustment... It's where the skill comes in on those double shots. 140. 60. I did do a little bit of a, a study, a bit of research on these systems not too long ago, and they do generate impact and force it has to go somewhere that often just causes the point side of the dart just to flicker off course very slightly so you may see a few 45 strange angle Yuri darts at times and if you could imagine the size on a dartboard being like a load of matchsticks all bundled together when that point then starts hitting that on a sideways angle 94. rather than solidly square on that's sometimes where you get the odd dropout and people will say, oh, it's the board. No, it's not the board. It's the, it's the, the pace of the dart has been, has been reduced by hitting. 82. And, and its impact Game on the board on the second leg. is a lot Yuri slower Brewer. than it would have been without a connection with something else. So Yuri now takes a 2-0 lead here and it's his Third throw. Third leg is Yuri to throw first. Game on. And that break was the best leg of the day so far from him going out in just 13 darts. And if you remember earlier on about game one, maybe game two when Brewer was playing earlier on, I said he's the sort of player that's going to play a little bit inconsistent and then he's going to sting someone with a good sort of high 90s average. And that's where he's sort of sitting at the moment. As you can see, the angle of entry here for 60. young Brewer. Kicking over. A little bit to the side. This. More ideal here from Mal coming straight down the barrel. This is what you want. You want your flight looking back at you. Yeah, so you can use it and 60. use the flight. Uh, you know, many 180s that you hit. That last dart will be an overthrow that you use the flight and the barrel to then just slide down 100. the side into the right direction and... Yeah, you can see why we say that that one's a blocker that's under the treble 20. Because the place that he needs to be to hit that treble 20, the flight is right in the way. See, this is perfect. That is perfect angle. What a great camera shot. 122. To show exactly how Mal come in there, used the first dart. Do you know what we're seeing here, though? This angle is giving us a lot of information here about Brewer. Mal, because his darts 40. are landing at inconsistent angles which means they are being Game thrown the inconsistently, coming. which might lead to why that form line has just been a bit inconsistency over time as well. Fourth leg is Mal to throw And first. that inconsistency can be the actual power in which you throw the projectile, the dart forward. That can be in the actual grip, maybe 41. it's slipping on its way forward, affecting the power. 
I think it's the grip here. If you look at the dart in the hand, when it comes back, the point of the dart just gets very violently pushed down towards the floor. That means that the dart's not going to go on a natural arc. The first thing it's got to do is correct itself in the air. So the dart's going to sort of violently come up. He's not going to be able to do the arc, which means he's going to need a lot of shoulder, essentially, in the throw. You can just see there that sort of lift of the shoulder. 134. And that will come due to the dart point pointing right down at the floor. It just caused that inconsistency, and you can see that coming through in the angle 97. of entry of the darts on the board. And right on the point of release as well, he does a little a little flip with that point as well. So it's not always going to release 100. in exactly the same place, is it? Really watching it now. That last dart that went in the treble, actually, in the hand, you could see the dart levelling off. 100. And he ended up with a much more cleaner release. Now yeah, it's staying down. 58. These are things that he's probably not ever had an opportunity to look at. He's probably not played in front of cameras like this before, so he's been able to look at his throw over a period of a day. One of the biggest hazards people do is they put the phones on and film themselves throwing 15 darts. For those 15 darts, you're going to be quite focused on that technique. Well, I hope he doesn't watch this one back and think we're being negative 41. about his throw. We're not at all. We're just trying to explain why the dart does what it does. Nine. Mal, you require 24. And he dodged two darts, then missed two of his own. He come back. Game no. shot on the fourth leg. Mal coming. Shows experience there in leveling this one up because... He didn't get carried away with Brewer, who was running first. at that 97 average and flying. And you almost feel like Cummins just taking a bit of sting out the game here, just trying to take a little bit of pace off it, because already we've seen that translating. Brewer is moving a bit slow around the stage. He's not throwing with as much zip as he once was. Exactly, and I think if he'd have thrown with that zip at that double, I think he may well have hit it. And it's one of those doubles in the situation in the game where... Had he had a couple of points on that Group A 82. league table, then I think that one would have gone sailing in. And, and this is what creeps in as the group goes on. And it's a part of a game that you don't tend to have to deal with in any other aspect of this sport. It's either you're in and you're, going, you're, you're still in for the next match, 82. or you've lost and you're going home. Here, you've lost and you've still got to stay. And it's a different mindset. And what he'll do with experience is he'll work out ways of doing this. 16. So, again, I very recently played here, and we, we played ourselves. We play completely different paces. But because I know you're a slope, I did a longer walk. Now and I went right over 100. to the lights before I come back around. So I could stake up my pace. Where when you play a faster play, you just do a more narrow walk. And with this, if Brewer would have just wanted to keep that pace, he could have 92. kept the pace and just, just gone slightly detoured around and just allowed to keep it in his control. See, I get, keep getting accused of this slower 42. thing. And, and, and what happens is now you find the players 32. play you differently. So I do exactly the same. So I just Game take that longer walk. Mel coming. But then the player will throw slower because they think I'm throwing slower. And then I walk slower to counteract for what they're actually doing. Six leg I try not to, to change first. anything Game that I on. do from the, foot, the point of putting my foot to the hockey and throw in and taking the darts out and I just come round at the pace whichever the op I won't run round because I'm not built for running because I know there's a certain point where I want to release my darts in my rhythm and my thing and that's what I do so if you go slower against me I'll go even slower so it, it's the way that it works but once you work me out I'm very easy to beat as you well know Matt 135 Really impressed with Mal coming here. And this is what you get when you've been playing 43. and winning the events that he has. And he has had plenty of stage experience in the last sort of six to eight months. He played in the World Championship, played Alan Suter. 59. Qualified for a couple of World Series events when the PDC went over to Australia. 
took on Fallon Sherrick and Johnny Clayton on home soil. 92. Mal you require 170. But there'd be games that you wouldn't have been going in as favourite to. They're sort of games you'd have been going into almost with a bit of hope. 34. Where when he's come here, we've kind of not given him that luxury. One of the first things Henry said to you this morning was, come in a bit of value when the odds Mal came up at the start of the day. Yeah, he did, absolutely. And and yeah, there are and you play them differently as well. That's the bit. You you when you're an underdog, it's it's 52. probably the easiest you're game you ever play. And as you get better and better, you get to the point where it's rare that you're the underdog and you forget how to play it. Forty nine. Now you require eighty four. This is for the match. He's wrapped up a game already on the bullseye today. 59. Yuri require 83. Maybe that's why he's called the ball. Oh, that's tidy. Game that is a nice, Yuri Brewer. nice clean finish from Yuri Brewer there. Just to let Mal know Seventh that he's still leg. here. Yuri to throw first. Game on. And everything he's been taught now and everything he's practiced for. 93. Comes down to this one leg to try and get his first points on the Group A Week 1 table. 125. And it has been a good sort of solid performance here from Brewer. When you look at that plus column, those one trebles. 10 scores of a ton or more. Did race into a 2-0 lead in this one. 59. So we're starting to learn a lot about his game and where he is. Showing really good character here. His second maximum of this match. His fourth of the day. But that one could be the biggest of them all. That could be the one that sets him up for his first 60. couple of points. Yuri you require 132. Moves him off the bottom of the table. Showed maturity there, not going the champagne way. Would have been the easiest thing to do. He's now got to collect himself and come back. 80. With the right mindset for this double 40. top. 5. And I think he rushed in a little on that for me. Yeah, he's nowhere near, and you can see the disappointment when he's shaking his head there at the back of the stage. We talk about scoreboard pressure, there Yuri it is. Can he seal the deal? That's beginning to go wrong for him, one dart. 25. And that was always, Mal always going to be a problem once he hit that. Double three, but it's now 78 for Mal, and you see this going, don't you? Game, shot, and the match. Well, if you was now able to coming. predict that game, well done to you. Because all the way through there, that flip-flopped, it turned, it twisted. No idea which direction that was going to go. It all came down to experience, though, at the end of the day. Mal coming, a nice, clean 78 kill to win that match. Nice 83 from Jordi Brewer to keep him in that one. But good signs there for Jordi Brewer moving forward throughout Group A. Coming up next, we've got Moreno Blom, Wesley Harms.
Welcome back. Before the break, we saw Yuri Brewer defeated by Mal coming by four legs of three. A game that seesaw one way, then the other, but it was Mal that got the points in the end. Right, next up for us is an all-Dutch duel as Moreno Blom takes on Wesley Harms, watched by Scott and Matt. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> Another Dutchman looking for his first win with the group. We know... The longer that goes on, the more difficult it is to do. And we can say that Blom is playing a veteran of his country in the form of Wesley Harms. In darting comparisons and experience anyway, we call him a veteran, if not in age, because he's still nowhere near as old as I am. Yeah, the start of the day really good to Wesley Harms. A couple of victories. But first leg, it's Moreno to throw of first. That last Game victory on. is what was most impressive. A 97.67. Four from five on the finishers. And 100. I think the finishing stats being better is what brought the average up because in the opening game, he was finding the trebles with no problem, but the four from 16 is what sort of brought him down very slightly. I questioned the fact of him being the bookies' favourite on the basis of the lack of darts that we've seen in play. 81. But the more this is evolving and going on, certainly on day one, 85. You'd say Wesley Harms is the man so far. Yeah, and I'm told that uh, Wesley is still playing uh, 16. Dutch Super League, which is the equivalent of our county system and performing well there. 58. So I don't think he's going to be quite as rusty. And that's on Saturdays. So I don't think he's going to be quite so rusty as maybe one first thought. And maybe he was good value being favourite. So what you're saying is Wesley Harm likes playing on a Saturday. Which if he's playing this Saturday... 58. He could be playing for £5,000 and to be the first name through to Champions Week for Super Series 4. Indeed, he could. Ninety-three. Eighty-one. Wesley lad, Lacroix, 167. Moreno is a likable young lad. He's chasing that first win, and the longer it goes on, the harder it is to achieve. I Moreno can assure Lacroix, you. No matter what age you are. I think the longer it's going on, the more Wesley distracted Lacroix, and agitated 70. he's looking as well. The more animated he's becoming in the body. The the head movement is, is becoming so aware of his surroundings, is coming out of his own zone. And it's happening to both our youngsters today, but... 30. But what a place to be able to learn 60. to develop. I mean, wow. The mode of Super Series just does not fail to deliver. 40. Where do you require 40. Other young lads across the land and the globe are going to see these two here Game this week. Game shot in the first leg. Wesley Harms. And hope that it can be them one day. And that's what this is all about. Well, I speak to a lot of people in darts and... Second leg, it's Wesley to The Motor first. Super Series Game has on. become now a target for people that they want to be here. It is. It's like, you know, when I was a kid, it was a, a, a dream to play at Lakeside. And now this is... And this is becoming a dream, and, and this is probably a more 16. realistic dream than I had of trying to, to be one of 32 players in the world that went, went to the Lakeside World Championship. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, and this is happening week in, week out. 12 players every week. 140. You know, the, 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 the quantity of players, so that, that there's a chance. There's, a, there's more of a chance than... Than having to travel the world, spending all that money and everything, and to to get the hope of being at the world championship. 
Um, the story is we'll see more professional dart players. I think that's one thing we're definitely going to get now. Remember a conversation with 16. my head teacher because I didn't quite apply myself at school as well as maybe I should have. And my head teacher called me in and I was like, oh, I'm going to be a professional dart player. Why do I need to do science? And 45. he writes on the board, he goes... First of all, he goes, how many people in the world do you think are professional dart players? And when I was at school, there was probably about 10. 59. Says 10, 16 people. And he writes on the board, like, 0. 0.0, no, 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 no. I thought all these, and then one. He goes, that's probably the percentage you've got of actually being a professional dart player when you look at the amount of people that are in the world. 30. Compared to how many positions there are in the sport. What we're seeing now is an expansion of those positions through the amount of opportunities people's got with the PDC, the Challenge Tours, the ADCs, the WDF, and now the Super Series. It almost feels 30. unheard of that Moreno require 108. you get paid to play darts. And, you know, all these players are on guaranteed money. They've got their appearance fees. And they are some mightily big carrots 13. being dangled in front of them. Yeah, I have a similar story, and I will go into it in the next leg of, of, of schools and, and, and a school teacher. And... Here we go, it's double ten. Game shot in the second go one, one. Moreno Blom. It's a break back. And you can see he'd like to get on with it, but here we have to have a slight delay Vegas, Moreno, a few second countdown, which I wondered what that was all about until I played here, until uh, everything reboots 57. and starts the next leg. Yeah, going back to the schools thing, I, I had a great sports teacher who, who I played football for, and every I was one of those that played all the sports in the school. And we have we have our old school 16. page, and I've I've been voted our school's most successful sportsman since leaving, and we've had... Footballers like Jamie Redknapp that went to school with myself, there are multi-millionaires and I think classes. The most successful sportsman to lead the school, which I think is uh, a testament to where darts is in the sporting world right now, more than a testament to me. We've we've had cricketers, we've had golfers, we've 18. had all sorts, but um, the way that the game is now seen... Um, you know, it's a nice honour to have to be a, a, a former world dart champion and, and people look at you as if you are one of the best sportsmen to have left the school. And, and, and that, that is just just darts in the media at the moment. It's, it is so special. I'm not, I know we're not up there with Formula One just yet, but who knows? Why 140. not? 140. I think one of the things you'll get from Wesley Harms, who's had this bit of a break, maybe not from darts, 100. but from top-level darts, like an international level of play, which is what the Moda Super Series is. It's an international platform on an international stage. Is We're just going to see moments of inconsistency. 58, Wesley Harms, 121. make the most of those, which at the moment Moreno Blum's not doing. Forty-two. I remember back in the day when I first sort of met the Wesleys and, and the Dutch guys, and they never had the stage Here's experience. The they they, they don't play 79. their super leagues and things on stage. But we had county, and you'd come through the county system playing on a stage, and then you go to the world championships and play on a stage, and it wasn't that unfamiliar. But for these guys, sometimes they come over and Moreno qualify for these world championships or, or these TV tournaments that never played on stage before. And that's what's so good about the Super Series, Wesley like a crash 20. course of darts. Game shot in the third leg, Wesley Harms. I suppose what I'm trying to say is that this Moda Super Series, it has everything. It has every Fourth aspect leg is Wesley of the game to you first. need it to have on. to improve your game. And that is why it's becoming so desirable. 
43. Why people are starting to get themselves down to their ADC events. As they harm hit here, a ADC qualifier from 16. ADC Europe. Now coming a qualifier from ADC Australia. Do you think we're ever going to see those six names with, say, five, six different areas behind each name? To do with the ADC as, as, it, as this evolves. I think as it evolves, we're probably going to see qualifiers from many different platforms. We've seen people 51. coming to this off the back of the World Seniors. I believe there are 50 places available throughout the year for people of the World Seniors rankings as well. So I do feel that it's going to merge 45. in with more tours. I've used the phrase here before, worlds collide. Because what we've got often here is we've got the best players 46. on the ADC, got the best players on the PDC Development Tour, the Challenge Tour, the WDF, the Women's Tour. We take all the best players, the top players from all these systems, everything but the PDC Pro Tour. We 85. take all those systems and we put them here in Portsmouth and let them battle it out. And that can only good sixteen two people. That's us here at the Super Series. And the particular player that gets picked to come here to the Super Series through those systems. Darts is the winner. 60. This is one of those games that, being the winner of, you come off and you sort of 96. shake your head a bit. But when you come off and you've lost a game like this, these are the ones that sting. When you've not played well, but your opponent's not played well, and you just can't find it for those 9 to 12 darts 100. that separate you from your opponent. And you, you do. You come off shaking your head, feeling it's a game that's just passed you by somehow, and you don't know how. 98. Wesley require 113. Forty-five, Morena, you require eighty. All he had to do was stay straight. It's doing the simple things right, and at the moment, neither seem to be achieving that. And you just think they're going to bust out of this in a minute, and it'll be whoever gets there will will be going out straight out first dart. I don't know what the first dart was at there. I don't know if that was a top. If he's just tried going for a big twenty, if. He could be punished. Double four. 64. Moreno, you require 58. Got away with it, the young lad. Game shot in the fourth leg. He got away Moreno with it bottom. very well and, and, and jumped in both boots, didn't he, to take advantage of that. Flip to flight. Fifth leg is Moreno to throw first. Game on. So he's got the breaker throw back. 42. Absolutely, getting away with it is the phrase you use there that I've got to go with because if you think about what he's just done, that it took him four darts to give a dart the double from 80. So it took him four darts to score the 40 96. points to get the shot of the double. So getting away with one, I think, is the absolute expression there. But he still got to hit the double when he did that and got himself back in the game. It's two apiece. I think Wesley here can't believe that Blom is struggling quite so much. And for me, Blom is that first start has got with the angle of entry. <laughs> Every, uh, the whole world feels on top of his shoulders at the moment, the poor fella. That is a better, that is a much better dart. It, the, the first ones earlier were going an inch under and he's creating all sorts of problems for himself. That. Whether it was because of the dart or the flight dropped off for Wesley, it, it just composed him a little more. And now Wesley will go back. He's got something to bounce off of now. This is one of the games that once one player sparks into life, the other one's going to go with it. Because you can, you can get carried into sort of a reactive play. He's stepping back there because he doesn't like the lie. And the opportunity of 55. leaving something from there means he's going to be chasing around the board. Wesley require 167. This is just a game of two people just constantly trying to win the opportunity and win that small battle. Seventy-two. 
He'll be disappointed with that <clears throat> after such a good start. 45, Wesley require 95. Going the old school way, the 25 on the ball. 79, Moreno you often see players now just go straight for the trebles in those situations rather than the 25 on the ball. He's left it handy. 45, handy for a break. Wesley requires 16. He's put himself a leg away from the match. 5. Game shot on the fifth leg. Wesley Harms. Beautiful shot there, showing that deflection in off the flight. Wesley won't worry about that. Harms Sixth leg is Wesley to throw first. Will be coming back. Game on. And he'll be happy with a nice little 15 data here. As long as his opponent doesn't go out in 12. And we have to say, Blom does not look like doing that at this particular moment in time. 81. My first reaction when I saw that from that other angle was in off the post. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. 100. Definitely. Used the dart well, I think. Would be how I would describe it. Sixty. Gonna be said though, it's been a fifty-nine disappointing year really for Moreno Blom. He came here last year and had a really good week down here at the Super Series and then he went and won that WF ranking title and the eyes was on him a little bit, but since sort of the Q school phases. 94. Which was sort of back in January. He's not reached the last 16. Many of the development tours, all challenge tours yet this year. 85. The last 32 has been his best. 100. I remember covering him last year. He really did look like he was onto something, and sometimes just that weight of expectation can just weigh down a little bit on somebody. I think we're just seeing that a little bit at the moment with Moreno. One hundred and sixty-five. Moreno require one hundred and forty-eight. Again, it's just fifty-nine. Rid of that bagel on your. Wesley required 10. On your group stat, it really is. Game, shot, and the match, Wesley Harms. Disappointment there, very visible to see for Moreno Blom. Not happy with that performance, not happy with the result. But Wesley Harms keeps his 100% record going. Wasn't as pretty as his last performance, but the most important thing is he's got two more points on the board. The favourite is top of the table on six. Coming up next, Lee Cox takes on Yodi Brewer. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break, Wesley Harms got the better of Moreno Blom by four legs to two. So let's see what is happening in terms of the league table, because everyone's now played three matches, and Wesley Harms is the only player with a 100% record at the top of it. Lalby, Cox and Mal Cumming, both on four points. Yuri Blue and Moreno Blom yet to get off the mark. Right, next up for us, it is Lee Cox in action. He takes on Yuri Brewer, and this is being watched in the company of Scott Mitchell and Matthew Edgar. Thanks, Henry. <clears throat> yeah, this is a big chance for Lee Cox to uh, join Wesley Harms at the top of the table. Young Yuri still chasing that first win, and Sometimes you come into a game feeling that you're the favourite to play your opponent. That point can be a little difficult to overcome. First leg, it's Lee to throw first. Game on. I'm surprised in this match. Now, I like to keep an eye on the odds because I think they're a good indication into what the viewers are thinking at home. 122. And at the start of the day, this game was two to five Lee Cox. It's now one to three. That's not a very big move when we look at what's happened so far today. Lee Cox's last two matches have been a 95 and a 92 average in victory. And he's been looking very good and 16. dealing with all the situations well. Is it the most 180s of anybody so far today with six? Brewers had... A 67, a 77, and an 84. And there's no pattern of saying he's improving where with Lee Cox, there clearly is. 100. I thought that would probably be a lot smaller than 1 to 3. I, I expected to see about a 1 to 5, 1 to 6 shot here. 140. Yeah, I'm agreeing. The way the young man started here, 1 to 1 after 9 is not too shabby. 80. Yuri require 121. It does come to a point, and I found it the other week, that when you've lost a couple... 57. You get a Lee bit fed up with yourself and go, Do you know what, I've done all that trying. I'm just going to flow now and not to think too much and start enjoying myself. So that the people who are watching at home that are tuning in to, to, you know, that have known Three you for years, you're, you're playing more yourself and not worrying about the situation. And the young man has got himself a dart. 20 double here, but Lee required Lee 40. Cox put him under big, big pressure. Game shot in the first leg. And you have Lee to Cox. think that that's a bit of a steal, to be honest. But he had the throw and he had the dart. Second leg is Yuri to throw first. Game on. That's the advantage of throwing first. You don't have to be the biggest scorer in the leg. You can still get an opportunity. 99. And your opponent might only get that solo dart like you already got in that situation. Eighty-five. You see that grip of the dart in the hand of Lee Cox. A little bit more unusual. He sort of grips it down 30. towards the point. Comes really past that sort of balance point of the dart. Which is why you see 100. it sort of go through the air. Almost point down. And that's 60. why he can throw like this and get away with it where Yordi's going to have a bit more of that inconsistency on the angle of 
lie because he is coming behind the balance point of the dart. So the dart's going to flip rather than with Lee's that will just sort of go through the air a bit obscure. Yeah, agreed. 60. Agreed. Another more forward base throw. Jim Williams is another one that holds right at the front of the dart. 30. Doing very successfully as well at the minute. Jim Williams is looking good going up the rankings. 96. Doing well on the PDC Pro Tour. 51. Yeah, he's... Uh... He's doing it the right way, I think. I don't think you want to pull up too many trees, early doors, and then give yourself too much to do to try and hold your card and say year three. Really I think he's been very consistent. One hundred. Me, you require six. Pressure from the young Yuri. Game shot in the second leg. Lee Cox. Well, it feels right. It feels right. This is where Lee Cox has been playing. If anything, this is Third slightly under the first. level Lee Cox Game has been on. playing throughout today. He is really staking a claim in this group. 136. Really excited to see that game, which will be his final game of the day. Coming up in a couple of matches time, Lee Cox versus Wesley Harms. 80. One hundred and eighteen. Forty-five. This is one thing I'm noticing now. We said we'll learn a lot about people, and there's an opportunity here for the players to learn a lot about themselves as well. Sixty. When things start to go wrong for Yuri, it tends to continue to go wrong. He's not been able 42. to sort of snap out of a bad spell of darts yet. It seems to be the negativity just leads to more negativity. 140. And positivity for Lee Cox is meaning more positivity, which is the nature of the game. 45. I'm you afraid. And 47. That's why we love it. Likes the top, so he's left that one. Lot would go 15 for 32, so that it breaks down better. But he's obviously fancying that top. And 123. There are flashes and signs from this young man that it really is all there, isn't it? You know, it. Game shot and in the third. And at that age, Lee he's trying Cox. to find a positive from a game. It's. It's. I. I was always taught if. If you've lost 5-1, don't come off going, oh, you've lost 5-1. There Yuri must be something first. that you Game did. On. There must be a positive, a 140 to leave yourself a dart a double. You may not have got a dart a double, but it's a positive 57. sign. And, and you've, this advice I would give to, to, to younger players is that you've always done something like It's very rare you have a game, even if you've been hammered, that you haven't done something right. Even in a 5 0 defeat, there'll be some nugget or some seed that you can plant. 94. And it's about making that grow. But yeah, like you say, the big picture often overrides people's ability to pick out the positives. And it can be something very simple, like, a, you know, you're 3 0 down and you, you go off with 100. You know, the easiest thing to do is go off with 26, but you go off with 100 and you take the positivity from that. 94. But, but it's not. We're, we're, we're breeding winners and. and, and a lot of the guys are looking at it. Unless they win, they're not interested. And they've got to find something to develop their 100. game from, from a loss. They've got to find something. I wouldn't even say they're not happy with without winning because I see a lot of people unhappy with 85. winning. 85. We'll look at the Lee last game. 148. Wesley Harms coming off shaking his head after being 100% for the day winning all his matches. But this... For Lee Cox, we'll wrap this one up. The 148 Lee Cox, Game, a shot. solid match, performance. 4-0 victory with an average around about the 97. Lee Cox is getting stronger and stronger. And I don't just mean today. I mean in terms of his career. Lee Cox is going the right direction. And he's going towards 
the top of the table. He joins Wesley Harms at the top on six. Wesley Harms is in our next match. And he'll be taking on Dan Lauby. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break, Lee, Cooks, Lee Cox put in a fantastic performance to beat Yuri Brewer by four legs to nil, average just under 97, and finishing off with that fantastic 148 checkout for a 12 dart leg. Right, next up for us is Wesley Harms in action up against Danny Lauby. This is an important game now, up at the top end of the table, watching this one, Scott and Matt. Yes, Henry, it sure is an important match at the top of the table. Wesley will be looking for the form that he had against Mal Cumming. He didn't need to do a lot more in his last one. And Danny Lauvey will be looking to just up his average a little bit on what he's been doing today. He can't complain where he's been. He's got a couple of wins under his belt, but this one would be an important win for him. And the others out there, um, when it comes to the look of the table at the end of this match. I've liked First leg is Wesley watching to Danny. First. I, I always enjoy Game watching on. Danny Lauby play. I'm a big fan of these sort of quick, pacey players. But the focus and determination I've seen on Dan Lauby today has been different. A positive. We've got questions here over... Wesley Harms, despite the fact he's won three from three, that last performance of just a 72 average in victory over 94. Moreno Blom. Stats looking up the Dutch Super League stuff would say slightly different. He's on a 92% win rate over in the Dutch Super League and sitting at number three in their standings. 99. Some of the names you see down that list that are still playing. Not to be sniffed at. 92. Well, there's one player nearby him that's actually having a bit of a revival of form at the moment. Christian Kist. Someone we're seeing playing very well on the Challenge Tour. I believe he's had a couple of invites now to the Pro Tour as well. And 73. He's starting to get back to his best. and Well, we know what his best is. We do. I was on the end of it, actually, in one of, my, in one of the Challenge 65. Tour finals this year. Um, yeah, I made a... Slight boob, I think it was a bad score at 4-3, and he capitalised on that brilliantly. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's back doing what he does. 
This one now, Lobby trails by 100. He needs 60. to... 60. Wesley require 149. Find that treble, but unfortunately the first start was a blocker. Wesley's in the groove. Is it... Which way is he going for 70? Treble 10? 97. No. It's up to the treble 18. So he leads 52. Lowry will be looking to pressure. 78. And that last start. Wesley require 52. May give him a little thought, but somebody of Wesley's caliber will not be thinking anything other than check this out. Game shot on the first leg. Which he Wesley duly Hines. does. Second leg is Danny to throw first. Game on. When we mentioned about experience. This is what experience does. And this 41. is the thing you can't just buy or manufacture. It comes through the process. He did have that performance in the last game that was significantly lower. 25 points lower than the average prior to that match. 41. Then comes... Back on stage after just one break's time, which wasn't even a long game. It's a 4 nil by Lee Cox. No, so he's only had about 10, 12 minutes. But he's able to regroup. 7. Harms would have played in many games like this before over his career where wow, he's a fair bit riding on it. So he will be used to the situation it's just whether he can remember 57 that he's used to the situation because it's been a while ago i think i think you do forget how and what made you what you were when you've been out of the game for a, for a couple of years in in 100 and especially at that level it's very difficult to repeat it back again at that level the other thing that happens is quite often when 81. you think to the past, it's safe. So you, you'll tell yourself it's something it wasn't. It'll be quite easy for you to sit down with your friends and put on a match. Let's say, for example, you, you sat down with your friends to watch the Lakeside final. And you tell your friends, so you'll go, I felt like this. Or I knew this was going to go in. You didn't feel like that at the time. But when you're watching it back and it's 19. safe and it's happened and it's guaranteed... You can sit and say whatever you want, and you probably believe it. Oh, I knew I was going to hit that 180. But at the time, it was like, oh, please hit a 180, or I need this in this situation. And it comes from a different place. And it, it's safe when it's in the past. So Danny require that's why you can't go into a local bar without someone telling you how good they used to be at football or how good they used to be at something else. Because your memory fades slightly. It's where the saying, the older I get, the better I was. <laughs> 60. Danny required 32. This is for level game. Double 16. Shuffles across the hockey. 16. And it's still a miss there for Lauby. Wesley require 40. And that sort of focus... Determination that I've said has been written all over his face. Head. Wesley Harms. Just hasn't been there in this game so far. No, it hasn't. And Third leg is Wesley to throw first. Game on. I'm not really having to do a great deal here to be 2 nil up either, is he? Doing everything he needs to do, isn't he, at the moment? 100. It's just a steady performance. Two from two on the doubles. But Dan Lowby has only registered one 57. score of 100 or more. And that's where his problem has been because his game is built on that big scoring. But is that Danny knowing in his head that this is one of the targets of the 41. group? He knows if he wants to get out of this group in a couple of days, he... He, like Lee Cox, has been at the Challenge Tour for three days before this and travelled straight here from there. And He would have liked to get out of this group as number one and have a couple of days rest, I'm sure. We know that there's a computer screen 41. in the Players' Lounge where they've got access to the league table. 
there are players that watch 44. that league table that are very aware of the league table who sort of want to see what's going on all the time and when they see that zero in the L column of Wesley Harms, it just makes him harder to 55. beat because people then feel that they need to beat him rather than they want to beat him. I've got to be honest, I didn't realise that was there when we played and I didn't realise it was there till I realised that I couldn't qualify. So it, it, was, it, was a, it was a useless piece of information for me. But um, yeah, yeah, and you're absolutely right. I mean, the guys know before they come out here what they've got to do and that can sometimes make 14. it even harder. Although a stats man like you would probably prefer to know what you're going to do. When I'm playing, I don't. I, I like to... 83. I like to know what's sort of going on when I'm not playing. But when I am, I just want to just win which made it really awkward for me because obviously I've sat in this chair now for many weeks down here since the Super Series has opened and I know all the different ins and outs and possibilities and twists Danny and turns of a league table. So it was sort of impossible to not know what needed to happen. 43. Wesley requires Ignorance 84. is bliss sometimes and I think that might be part of the play here with this group because we do have a an inexperienced group here in terms of Super Series form. That does leave you a double, Wesley. 62 points scored. It's double 11. Just working it out. Just checking with a ref. You can ask what's left, but you can't ask 62. how to hit it. Danny requires 74. Can cause many a problem in a pub game. 54. Somebody will always shout it out 22. at the back and tell you when you're not supposed to know. Game shot on the third leg. Wesley Harms. Not happy with it, but he should be. He's 3-0 up. He has been perfect in terms Danny of the leg column. First. Game on. It will be the 22 data that will be concerning him. But right now, that's all it needs. 59. Everyone wants to hit nine dart legs, but... You've only got to be better than the person in front of you, and that's what gives you the points, and the points convert to pounds. This, this is one of the games we were highlighting this 16. morning that we were really looking forward to seeing, and uh, it's, it's sort of a bit, a bit of a damp squib, really. I think on the form 16. of today and how today has worked out, Wesley Harms, Lee Cox coming up at about five past one. UK time in just a game's time after the Malcolm and Moreno Blom game. That one 120 the main event of the day. On form, it could well be because they're both bouncing off of the other player, and I think this is the issue with this game. Nobody's really putting their foot on anybody's throat, it's just jogging along and like you say, 100. is Wesley going to be one of those guys that's disappointed with a win here? It could be a solid win. When we look at legs, legs quite often comes into play 16. when we start getting to the business end of Group A and we start to work out positions and who's playing for what. That leg difference does come into play and Danny Lau will be someone who we expect will be up there at the top end of the table battling 16. it out. So a huge scoreline victory here. Could be a red pen moment, and a red pen moment and severe importance Wesley that we refer back to come Wednesday. Sixty. Danny require eighty-four. Is this the spark that will light the law be touch paper? Game shot on the fourth. It is indeed. Danny it is indeed. Lauby hits the ball. He will get a lift from that. Fifth leg is Wesley to throw first. Harms will have seen it all before. And this is what I mean with Dan Lauby. If we watch him from earlier on, watching his head and watching where he's looking, watching where he's putting his eyes, taking a lot of hundred and four earlier on, that head was down. There was a big level of focus on Dan Lauby. 140.
Raise of the eyebrows there from Wesley. A little higher in the bed than you'd have wanted. Wasn't a dart you could 140. use. 140. He was able to use the open bed successfully. Back to back 140s here from La uh, from 56. Harms. Sorry. Yeah, that was great adjustment to just slide across the hockey and plop it into the open side of the bed. And that's put him in command in this fifth leg. 85. And once again, a good find with the last start from Harms. 41. Wesley require 136. No harm done there from Harms when he found the treble with the last start. Looking to set this one up. 78. Looking to set it up and get himself out of Harms' way. It started. 25. Wesley require 58. Leave all the good ones to Murph. So it's Harms for the win then. Double 10. Game. And he takes sure. it. And the match for Wesley Harms. One win against Danny Lorby. How important is that win? As my co-commenter said, commentator said, how important will that win be come Wednesday? There we have it. 82 for Harms. A disappointing 73 for Lorby. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Mal Cummin and Moreno Blom. to the Motor Super Series, where before the break we saw Wesley Harms get the better of Danny Lowby. We're about to come to the conclusion of our penultimate round of matches for the day, and we begin with a battle between Mal Cumming and Moreno Blom. Watching this one, Scott and Matt. Thank you, Henry. Mal Cumming, Moreno Blom. Blom currently on zero points and casting that of a frustrated figure, but he's had plenty of time now to put that right in the back room but he's coming up here against a very experienced man and a man in good winning form here in Mal Cumming. It's fair to say 
We have yet to see the very best from Mal Cumming. But I expect we're going to see it pretty soon. When you've got that sort of confidence of winning all the titles that the bull has been doing, you know it's just around the corner. First leg, it's Mal to throw first. Game on. Someone who is a little bit further than around the corner at the moment is our reigning Moda Super Series champion, who has actually been in touch. Luke Littler tuning in. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, 100. wherever it is. You are Luke. He's in Benidorm at the moment. He's gone over there to spend some of his £20,000. And whilst on holiday in Benidorm, he's put the darts on. He just can't stop that lad. He was doing the same here. He was winning Group A and then going down to a local open and winning that as well. 45. He just can't stop. Oh, the joys of being 16 years old and still being madly in love with the game. I love that. I think that's great. 140. And, yeah, and what a champion. I'm sure that smile is still hooked over each ear from Saturday night. And and I'm 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 so pleased the way that you see him. He was very emotional about winning it and I and that's how much it meant to him and I and I think that's great because uh it's a feeling that, that you need to have and, and, and keep remembering so that you can continue to try and have more and more of those moments. Just looking at his photo though on Twitter, 16. I wonder if he booked this before he won the twenty thousand pound. If I just won twenty thousand pound, I'd be having a bigger swimming pool than that one. Maybe a few slides in it as well. Is, is he that far away from the pool? He's got to catch a taxi to get there. Is that well? No, that's the sign. Thirty-two. Enjoy your break, young fella. Enjoy your break. Forty-one. Now you require sixty. So this one skipped along there. And Mal Game just shot on the first leg. Mal coming. Stopped on the double ten. Let's hold his own throw. Second leg's Moreno I to throw first. Moreno on his practice darts, on his second lot of practice darts. He threw a poor 71. dart. 71. And then was halfway up the hockey. When he threw his next two, he, he put his foot on the hockey and it was like, bleh. I've seen this a few times, actually, from the younger players almost 26. dismissing the practice darts. And as somebody who's coached at an elite level 100. in football, one of the things about the warm-up and the, the practice and the preparation, it's all about preparing the mind and the body. 180. And when you're doing things like that, just spurning those darts, burning those darts in the, in the practice. 134. You, you're missing the opportunity to prepare the mind for the activity as well. He's definitely thrown a lot quicker this leg. But 135. The one that that's shooting the most is now coming. Here we go. Yeah, he's 100. Rattling them in there now. Now you require Ryan 160. Blanc. I think he's totally fed up that he's not got any points on the board at the minute. 100. Moreno require 96. Forty-one. Mao, you require sixty. That's a bit of a mess from there. Giving Mao another opportunity at sixty. Game shot in the second leg. Which he Mal duly coming. obliges and takes. Just sort of looking ahead to Third the week and to going back first. to that slide we saw at the start of the day when we looked at the odds for the week. And at the moment. When I'm looking at the names that are coming in to join us at the back end of this week... 99. And I'm looking at who's here. Essentially, the odds compilers are saying the winner's going to come from Group A. 140. Because four out of the top five are all playing in Group A. But Lee Cox is standing out at the moment on what he's doing today and what I mentioned earlier on in the fact that I feel he's improving as a player in 100. general. 100. 11 to 1 before play started today. Well, 57. There's value there, isn't there, without doubt. 56. And that's particularly off of the form that he showed today. 40. Right, 
Nice going back into that. It's running pretty rapidly. Eighty-five. Malcolm's not a player that you'd make any note in terms of pace. You wouldn't say he's quick. One hundred. Like, you'd just say he's. Mal, you require one hundred and sixty-one. He's, he's just there, isn't he? And I think with a player that is of that sort of pace, I think when you come up against someone like Moreno, who's forty-one, trying Moreno to rush through the pace a little bit, I think it suits Mal because essentially it'll be like there's no opponent there. It'll just be like being on the practice board for him. Not sure what Moreno's done here. The one six four. He's obviously gone 79. to go. Seventy nine. Mal, you require one hundred and twenty. Two trouble nineteen routes in the ball, and he hit the first one, and then totally confused himself. I think. The brain's frazzled, isn't it, for Moreno at the moment? One hundred. Moreno require eighty five. He's sort of second guessing himself, and even this shot here, second guessing himself. He's not sure of anything at the moment. The maths are all over the place. He's not happy with the darts. Game shot on the third leg. Moreno Blom. Put a smile on your face, Moreno. Because finally, he'll feel that something's going his way. Fourth leg is Moreno. That's something first. to be positive Hang about. On. This is what we were talking about earlier. You've got to find things in games. and 140. He is obviously feeling positive about it, but it's just certainly not showing in his body language or his face. So, Come on, young fella. 140. Dare I say that right now 57. it almost feels that he's playing the cameras and not playing the darts. I wasn't going to say that, but 85. I agree. And I think I'm hoping that, you know, he could be one of those that will obviously phone 38. home after and, and, and somebody's going to tell him that maybe he wasn't as focused on this as, as he's focused on the situation more than 58. the game, I think is the word. It's, it's the right word, I think. Yeah, very facially reactive to to situations and 59 almost like he's trying to tell us the story my first ever lakeside i, I was the same I, I jumped about on it at 180 and i got home and i'd lost the game and i got home and people said what were you doing no that that's not how you got there that's not what you did to get to a lakeside world championships and uh you you learn pretty quickly that uh yeah the cameras are there just to record for nostalgia more than Mal Mal anything else. 124. And rely on us. We'll, we'll tell the story of the game. We'll paint that picture. 92. And the second one, I went back in a pink shirt. Bright pink shirt. The brightest pink you've ever seen. 100. And got beat by Martin Adams now in 21 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Came crashing down around my ears. So you have to play the game and not the situation. No score. Moreno requires 68. He could put himself back in this match here. Didn't get a dart of tops. 48. Just those very small margins. Now you require 32. The difference between being level. Game shot on the fourth he leg. One away from Malcolm. losing the match. I've got to ask you though, is, is this the uh, the same friends that advised you to walk on with that dog lead, or was that uh, your own brain? Mal to throw first. Well, you, Game you on. say that, right? You say that, but now look at the walk-ons that we're seeing. I mean, back when I came on with the dog lead, I was getting hammered by pros from the 80s on social media saying I was making the game a joke. And I've seen some lately that, wow, 58. me coming on with an invisible dog and a dog lead is just a dip in the ocean to some of the stuff I've seen lately. 60. We don't need to name names, but a lawnmower. 81. A plastic lawnmower. And I'm Scotty Dog and got slated for bringing a dog on. Wow. 95. I 
think Dirk Van Dijvenbode is going to have to go to every 45. competition, particularly Euro Tours, with a medic. There's been some interesting walk-ons recently. Certainly on the European 55. Tour. Most of them by one man. But 60. all jokes aside, I do find it very entertaining. And if it, and if it puts a smile on your face, well, that's good for the game in, in my eyes. Eighty. It is ultimately an entertainment 41. business as much as it is sport. Mal, you require eighty-six. And that's why it's become so popular around the world. 61. We did go for it. I was just thinking, the bull surely won't be going for the bull here. But expected with the experience he's got, just to set that one up, I'm very surprised. 60. The Martins now Adam's philosophy 25. about, well, if you leave it, you got to go for it, boy, ain't you? Here we go. Double eight. 17. Moreno, you require 156. This, this is... would be a big ask, wouldn't it? This is a sort of 56. mess that can sort of start evolving here. That should have been three darts of the now double. Instead, eight. he's having to chase it down in bits. And Moreno is just getting closer Game. and closer sure. all the time, but he won't Malcolm. get close enough. Malcoming has got over the line and condemned Moreno Blob to his fourth defeat in a row. His fourth defeat out of four today. He has not turned up as of yet, but he's got plenty of time to do so as his campaign continues. Malcoming moves on to six points at his three wins and one defeat for him. Coming up next, Wesley Harms takes on Lee Cox in what could be game of the day. Welcome back to the Moda Super Series, where before the break, Mal Cumming got the better Moreno Blom by four legs to one. And so we're about to enter the final round of fixtures for the day. At the top of it, Wesley Harms, the only player to have won each and every single one of his matches. But up against him is Lee Cox, a player, as you can see in that table, is second in it. So it's the first game of the final round, and it's going to be watched by Scott and Matt. Yep, thanks, H. Doing a good job up there on the balcony, as always. Uh, resident presenter for the week. And, uh, yeah, this is an interesting matchup. I mean, if Wesley 
can take this one. He will look into his sleep tonight very well. He will be unbeaten on the first day. And he'll have a little start on people. But Lee Cox, is he really has been the one that's looked cool, calm and collected today. I do believe that this one could go one or two ways. It will be an absolute ripper. Or oh, they're going to be frightened to death of one another because of the situation of that league table that was just flashed up. First leg, it's Wesley to throw first. Game on. I've coined this one as being potentially the main event of the day. The two players in the top two positions. First versus second. 60. The two players that have probably shown us the most, and the one player who has, has shown us the most, is Lee Cox. He has been the standout 100. performer of the day. Not just because he's been averaging the most, but his game management. There's been moments where he's had to hit something. Like the 116 to win the match. 60. The 101 finish. A, a 72 with one dart in hand. He has been put into situations and moments where he's needed to respond and he has 140 and that game that he lost was the first one of the day wasn't it against mal Cummins? and he's just seemed to have said you know what i'm fed up with losing now i'm gonna gonna start reeling them off which he has and like you say it's not about the average it's about the way that he's conducted and it, like you say his board management everything has just been spot on he's got it right so far 60. today and he could end up being eight point on eight points at the top of the table with Wesley. But I think if you offered them both that at the start of the day, they would have 41. both took that. Forty-one. It's his reaction to negativity as well, massively improved. But that might come off the back as well of a recent successful Challenge Tour campaign as well, which I know. Sixty. He's very keen on doing something on the PDC. He'd love a PDC Tour card. He'll be. Continuing to try and earn one of those, whether that is through the Challenge Tour or through Q School come 16. January. Lee require 141. Here we go then. Oh, here we go then. Double 12 just grips the dart correctly. 129. Right on the wire. This is on the harm's throw, let's not forget. He will be back. 96. Lee required 12. Game shot in the first leg. Good start Lee from Lee Cox. So it's a good start, but it's more of a continuation of the standard that we have seen from him throughout Second the day. Second leg, it's Lee to throw first. Game on. It's likely has the attitude. I'm putting this game up here right now, and if you want to beat me, you're going to have to better it. If 60. not, I'm going to get you. Arms was the puckies' favourite before the start of play. 41. Lee Cox was the fourth favourite. And I think it's fair to say 41. that if you got the 13-2 to 2 about Lee Cox, first of all, well done to you. But if you didn't get the 13-2 to 2 about Lee Cox, forget it. Because that is not going to appear for the rest of this week. 60. No, not on your lenny, it will. So. Sixty. Again, it's one of those situations where. Cox is just trying that little bit too hard on his own throat. And Wesley's now put himself in the situation where he knows he's got to break him. 45. Cox has done the hard work knowing that he needed a break. He's now got to hold his own throw in. A break is only good, as good as the leg after, isn't it? Yeah, he did 45. all the hard work here, but he's, he's getting away with it. 
They're both on 295 after 12 darts, which down your local would be point for the marker. 45. But he's not producing in this one. And you can see this is that frustration that I said can eat into Lee Cox quite quickly. And after everything that's gone well for him so far today, we can see how he's sort of imploding 16. quite early here in just one negative leg. But the longer your opponent goes on and doing the same, it makes it even harder to go and then go and drop that that next ton plus score. 122. But again, that's a good visit, a good move as well to, to move out and hit the treble 19. And you expect Harms now to follow. Although the facial expressions on 55. his face. Lee, you require 128. <laughs> the hand expressions are showing that he is not happy with oneself either. Numbers-wise, this is quite an easy situation for Lee 88. Cox. But as the way those darts was laid in the board... 100. Consider his options. 40. Mostly through those considerably faster. Game shot in the second leg. Lee Cox. To try and indicate that the leg is gone. Which it duly was. So he was right. Third leg is Wesley to throw first. But I think Game on. We spoke about imploding and you can see it's Wesley that's definitely not the happier of the two. If you could talk to players and talk them through games here, what you'd 16. say to Lee Cox at the end of that game is when you're shaking his head at winning that leg, it doesn't matter if you play well or you play bad, you're winning. 45. You won the leg when you played well. You won the leg when you played bad. Everything's a positive regardless of the performance at the moment. And that is down to the fact that well, 100. Wesley's average is... You'd struggle in Super League with that. I wonder if the games would change if you had like a corner man after five minutes. A little bit like boxing. You, you're through for five minutes, and when that leg went over, you had 30 seconds. You could go away, have a chat with somebody, just on the side, and then come back on. How how would that change the game 15. and players' players' attitude? I mean, I remember, you know, at, at Lakesides and stuff that Dozer had 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 his friend Dennis Coleman. Every time there was a break, that Dennis sorted 100. him out and went and chatted with him, and 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 then it, and does would walk back on with a spring in his step again, and away he'd go. And um, yeah, I know does has mentioned him a few times, but it would be really interesting if, if you could do that sort of part way through games, wouldn't it? I think it would really benefit certain players. I think some players wouldn't use it. One hundred. But I think certain players would. And I think certain players almost need it. Totally agree. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I tended not to really want it. I tended to want to come away and, and be in a break and not Lee really think about the game. And you know. Um seventy six. Wesley require 113. I suppose in boxing, you can hardly towel yourself down, can you, really? You need a corner man, don't you? So here we go. This is big. This is big. Harms to save his throat. Game shot in oh, the third Oh, it was huge. Leg. Wesley It Harms. was huge. Lee Cox watched that. Fourth leg is Lee. I was watching first. Lee rather than the board just to see what his reaction was. And he was watching. And then when the treble 20 went in, he shook his head. Almost in expectation. One hundred and forty. Nail that finish, and that is his third ton plus finish of the day for Wesley. This would indicate why he's right up there, the top of the 41. table. Forty-one. And I think the other thing that we can say there is. That finish from Wesley Harms really does play 100. in the fact of you don't have to be brilliant all the time. You have to be brilliant at the right time because he's still in this match, despite the fact 100. he's throwing a lower end of a Super League average. He won't be thinking averages right now. 
he'd be thinking breaking the leg down, breaking the game down into legs, playing one leg at a time. 60. Lee require 121. And you have to say it's advantage Cox in leg four. 97. Lee not opting to go for the 17s there. Just eliminating the temptation to go for the bullseye. A great reaction here from Lee Cox. 12 darts in 36. and he's left himself on double 12. Lee require 24. Really good reaction to receiving that 113 blow from Wesley Harms. 12. 240 points ahead on the scoring phase, so shouldn't be too disheartened by missing that one. But like I say, there are ones that you just want to get them 72. done and dusted and out the way you and, require 12. and not let your opponent have any sniff of weakness. Game shot on the full flag, Lee Cox. He has been the standout performer for me today, Lee Cox. Fifth and leg is Wesley. If he is to win this one 4-1, on. one, he will go top of the table. Hit that double six there and give his little head a whoo at the board. You know, it was a big important moment. He knew it needed to go with those three, and even though his opponent way, way back, he knew he needed to go there mentally for himself, 60. as well as the way that his opponent was looking at the situation that he's now in. One hundred and forty. Big fan of the nickname as well. Crafty Coxie. A little bit of a play on a, another 100. famous London dart player. Yeah, I like that. And obviously, Wesley's sparky because he's an electrician by trade. Sixty. I wonder if he's... Brought multiple pairs of these Wesley Harm shoes with him this 100. week. One hundred. He used to actually have sparky fingerless gloves with the sparky logos on the back of the gloves. I presume that's because he's an electrician and some cold days 60. he needed the fingers, but he would actually play in them and practice in them. And if there was a cold venue, he had no problem with playing with the gloves on or practicing at least. 180, Wesley Ucrow, The biggest 180 hitter of the day so far has been Lee Cox. But what a time to get your first one of this match. His eighth of the day. 77. One that sets him up Lee just two darts 61. away. I'm going to the top of the table. Still two darts away. Game, shot. Good performance the there from Lee, Lee Cox. Cox. Clinical in the end. Wesley Harms didn't really show up for that one, but he has now, for the first time this week, tasted defeat. That comes at the hands of Lee Cox, who temporarily puts himself top of the table. Four wins from his five games. He'll be back tomorrow, as will Wesley Harms. But before then, we've got Moreno Blom and Jordi Brewer. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty.
Every Saturday, we open our doors for our weekly finals night. For a unique and intimate dance experience. Meet the dance stars and even the team of the telly. Here at our purpose-built venue in Portsmouth. Every single Saturday evening. Tickets can be booked via this QR code. Or at www.dartshop.tv for a very small booking fee. Follow us at MSS Darts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and TikTok for all the latest ticketing news. All you need to do, log on, book, turn up and the action gets underway from 7.30pm. So what are you waiting for? Get your tickets to the darts. We look forward to welcoming you to the Moda Super Series very soon. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series, where before the break we saw Lee Cox get the better of Wesley Harms by four legs to one. That means he'll temporarily go above Wesley Harms overnight. He is top of the table. Next up for us, Marina Blom up against Yuri Burr. It's another all-Dutch affair. The winner looking to finish off their day in the winner's enclosure. Right, let's get into this one then with Scott and with Matt. Thanks, H. Yes, we... Find these two propping up the bottom of the group. And one of them has to go home with two points from the day. And one will remain propping up the group. Both will have not the best night's sleep, I'm sure. I think both will have learned more first about themselves to throw first. and their game after today. And I think in years to come, they will 16. look back at this quite a vital part of their development within our fantastic game. No one 57. wants to be bottom of the table. But one of these players is going to leave here tonight in that position. 95. Experience, titles, all ticks in the box of Moreno Blom. But when you've had a day like this where 60. there hasn't been too many positives and it's been defeat after defeat, one of them games 134. where anything could happen. I'm sure that. Because these two are the ages of 20 and 21, they would have played each other many times through Dutch youth system. 60. Sort of Dutch rankings, I would have said. 100. Fifty-nine. Moreno require 112. He has started the stronger. A little 52. Confused on that route. I know there's a lot of new routes and new ways of going for things these days, but 15. 95. Moreno requires 60. 112. Failing to see the. Positivity of that. Yuri you require 170. If you were successful in hit 45. That would have left him 67, 60. which is still another Moreno treble to leave 20. a double. Game shot in the first leg. Moreno Blom. It does leave a double in the end and takes it out in the end, but it kind of Second was leg is Yuri to throw going first. a long way round something there that sort of overcomplicated quite a simple situation. Yeah, it did for me too. It, it uh, I've seen 115 go that way. 140. Uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, fathom me that one. Obviously, one that we're going to have to learn, Matt. 85. I just don't know why I'd want to hit two trebles when you can hit just the one. A problem with a the flight there that 46. keeps coming off every time he goes to throw. Had it in the last game. He had the flight pop off a couple of times. It's 
140. Time to change your stem so that, that doesn't keep playing on your mind, I think. 130. 100. I think I might need to get my calculator out whilst I'm watching this one. 60. He's having some Yuri odd switches. Certainly testing out our spotter today. 99. Moraney require 125. 85. Yuri require 20. 15. Moreno you require 40. Here, uh, Moreno Blom, who knows much Game hasn't gone his way today, leg. so he's just Moreno playing with Blom. freedom. And he's just experimenting a little bit. Because he seems to be going the hard way about doing everything in this Third one. Third leg's Moreno to throw first. Game on. But yet, he's producing the best average we've seen since match number two when he played about half past ten this morning. 58. I just think he's got an infatuation with treble 15, maybe. it's I don't know. 137. Maybe it's our age, mate. Maybe we really have lost the plot and we've... 45. I, I, was it? I don't no, I don't, I, so I'm still going back to that shot. I'm thinking if he had the 45, he's still left 67. Is he thinking that the treble 17 is right next door? But a bit for, for the treble 17. I don't know. Well, I'm going to ask. I will ask him. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. 140. You might need to give him a bit of glue or something as well for that flight because he's going to end up with a bad back the amount he's been down there today. 58. Moraney require 142. I don't like my life fight's coming out because that counts as a sit up band and all down there to pick them up in my life. So I don't want to be doing too many of those. 75. 54. Moraney require 67. 47. Time on his hands again. Not been the day yet for the young brewer. 100. Moreno required 20. Give us signs and glimpses. Game shot on the third leg. Moreno block. Interesting to see how he develops tomorrow. We always give people a bit of grace when they first come to the Super Series. It's a fourth leg is Yuri to throw unique first. Unique sort on. of environment and feel, especially if you've not played on a stage before. Yes, there's no crowd in there. 100. But. It still has that stage feel about it. One hundred. Anyone who's played on this sort of environment will know exactly what I mean. Just where everything seems to stand out a little bit more. The board feels like it's standing off the wall. It just feels a bit more highlighted, and that's just due to the lighting. 81. It's a very well-lit stage. Like I said at the top of the show, I felt it was one of the best I've ever thrown on, and I wasn't even winning on it and doing any sense. 131. So it, was, it was definitely not the throw or the conditions that were putting me off. It's probably just the players you had to play against, wasn't it? They were just all just way out of my league. They were... 81. Yuri require 130. It, some of them more well-known on social media. But there we go. 118. 171. Yuri required 12. He said this scoreboard pressure a thing. If it is, that game was a shot on the fourth shot there from Moreno Yuri Blom, Brewer. but didn't bother Brewer. It's his first leg on the board in this game, but it was a hold of throw. Fifth so leg's Moreno to throw first. Need to go some to get back into this one. 90. Watching Yuri here, and he kind of kisses the dart away. He brings it back to his face. And the act, is, the, the, we were watching his, his hands earlier. I wasn't watching his 99. face. And he, and he brings the flight right back to his face and like kisses it away. It touches his lip. 
140. And on that occasion, to very good effect. 57. His best performance of the day came in match number three. It was 84.68 in that one. 125. I'll make reference to that because that is the direction he is going at the moment. He's very short. 44. To the 84 average at the moment. 59. Thrown with a bit more, not pace, a bit more power, a bit more purpose. 171. Venom. A bit more Yuri venom, isn't 100. it? More positivity. Game shot on the fifth leg. Brilliant. Yuri Brewer. Once again, Moreno Blom, 171, three treble 19s, leaves himself on tops. Tops for the fifth match. Fifth leg is Yuri to throw first. Yuri Brewer. On. Hits his first tumpless checkout of the week in just two darts. 140. Brilliant. This is what we kind of warned at the very start of the day today. We says he's the sort of player that 27. you'll start to write off and then we'll just find for eight or ten minutes. Is this the eight or 96. ten minutes that could see him turn this game around? 100. When you're in this free-flowing scoring mood, it's down to your opponent to stop you being able to do that by hitting scores of his own. And at the moment, 41. we're at that mid-range part of this leg that is so, so important. Well, Brewer. 99. And just one score can stop you, but he's still 50 in front, plus these. 44. But he's now starting to think about the finishing line. Becoming aware of the comeback, isn't he? He's becoming aware of the situation 83. that he's starting to carve himself out here. Still in his hands. 140. And that's special. That is special. 140. Yuri require 40. And once again, game shot in the Blom sixth had a Yuri double Brewer. treble visit to leave something handy, and again, he didn't return. But now he has the dart. Seven darts. final legs. Moreno to throw first. Do you believe? 95. In the word momentum. If you do, you'd quite fancy Yuri Brewer to win this one. Because he has come from 3 0 down 96. and survived hefty scoreboard pressure multiple times in this one. 60. Producing his best darts. And Blom is nine darts away still from being able to check out. 77. Big trouble with the last visit there. 46. Yuri. This is some turnaround. One and again, finds a big treble with a last dart. Blom could be in trouble. 180. Could not be in trouble. Another maximum visit. His first 180 of the match. He has had those two big visits down on the 19th. This is class. Fantastic reply. Not going to leave 26. a shot there, and that is a disaster. Yuri required 88. So Yuri has his chance. Got to go 18 ball. 48. That was the shot that won Luke Little of the Super Series on Saturday. Blom again has fluffed his lines at the 29. most crucial part. Yuri required 40. The short irons have not been good at the course. Now what's Yuri's putting like? 20. Moreno requires 65. First time today, Yuri gets matched darts. He gets three at the target Game. that he Shot. has been hitting match. to Moreno get him into Blom. that situation. Miss the darts. Blom does not. A little bit of experience and that title winning form for Moreno Blom was just enough there to get him over the line. But positive signs there for both players who end the day with their best performances so far.
of the day. We've got one more match still to come for you today, which is Dan Lauby taking on Mal Cumming. the Motors Super Series where before the break we saw Moreno Blanc get the better of Yuri Brewer by four legs to three and so we are down to our final game on the opening day of Series 4. It sees Danny Lauby in action he takes on Mal Cumming. It's a battle between America and Australia showing the real internationalness of the Motors Super Series. It's a pivotal one as well in terms of jostling for position after day one. So watching this one in the cons box, Scott and Matt. Thanks Henry. Yeah. Where has the time gone today? We were already on our last game. And it's quite an important one for the lads. It's uh, Danny Lowry. He really needs to win this one to stay in touch. Of the leading pack of Wesley Harms and Lee Cox. But of course, Mal coming should he get by Danny Lowry. He can join. The front runners on eight after day one. And put a little gap between those top three and the others. I think this could be quite a quick game. I think Mal coming first could get leg dragged is Danny along to here. First game on. Danny Lorby's pace. But we will see. 58. All be unraveled in the next 10 minutes. Or sometimes six. Been a real good first day of action today. I think. 104. The league table is going to be in one of those positions that we're going to have four players battling it out throughout. Tomorrow is the 93. day where it all really takes shape in terms of the league table, and we know what we're going into the final day with but I think we're just 100. gonna be jiggling a few points around these top four players and it's gonna come down 60. to the wire. There's some evenly matched players. It's all gonna come down to those individual sort of moments 43. and key battles which today was all won by Lee Cox. He was mightily impressive in all of those moments. Yeah, it's going to come down to individual duels. And like you say, there's a 16. laptop next door and that, that table will be ever-changing. And Will Lee Cox take off into the sunset on moving day, which Tuesday is usually 58. known as. It sets up for the last day, so... 
we have this one here to finish first to end 100 day Mountain one Require, 160. series four week one group a One hundred and forty. Danny, you require one hundred and thirty. Ninety-six. Mal, you Way require off. twenty. Rushed, I think you could call it. I know it's his weight, but I think he was even quicker than that. Game shot on the first leg. I was going to say, was it a tired dart? Because it looked like there's a, a lot of lift in there. Which if Second you leg is Mal to throw sort of first. extension Game in on. the throw, you tend to find that you have that bit of extra lift, which often means the dart's going to drop low. 58. We'll keep an eye on that throughout this one. 77. First dart drops violently low and then he switches. I think maybe it is a bit of fatigue kicking in here for Dan Lauby. One hundred. We look at his last performance as well. Sort of been on the slide since the mid part of the day. One hundred. As we said earlier, it has been four days on the trot. If you count those three challenge tour days as well. And he was playing just yesterday. Sixty. He reached the third round at the PDC Challenge Tour, losing out to Gary Blades, someone we see regularly down here at the. Super Series, a man he actually beat the day prior. Gary Blades in the third round. And then Blades gave his revenge yesterday. Gary Blades, a man in the same stable as Mal Cumming, the man he's playing 96. with now. They've got the same manufacturer. Pick up some good wins. 140. On Danny require 170. The previous time, but this time round, hasn't been a successful one really for Danny Lalby. Now you require 60. So Mal back at that 60. We've seen Game him hit that a couple of times leg. already today Mal in two darts, and he's done it again. Holds his Third throw. Third it's Danny to throw first. Game on. Holds his throw. All important. 42. Now well, he needs to hold his to stay in this match. If Mal can just get himself into some sort of cruise control. 59. One hundred. Sometimes it is far better for your opponent to be scoring and scoring when you're two 0 up, so that you can try follow. Sixty. He only uses a twenty-three gram dart. Mal come in and. One hundred. He's a big old rig for around twenty-three gram darts. I tell you. 140. Does he throw them? It's superb stuff from Mal coming. 60. Let's look at the amount of legs Dan Lauby's played so far on that challenge tour. 342 41. legs played already from Dan Lauby. 133. That is some stat, mate. Good work. Well, we could look at some of the others that have played incredible. About 404 61. legs. Danny Christian requires Kist. 66. No surprise to see Barry Van Pier. 459 46. legs. Now you require played. 140. That's because he keeps winning so many matches. He looks home and hosed in the challenge store for his tour car back, that's for sure. 54. Danny, you require 20. Game shot on the third leg. Danny Lauby. Lauby gets himself back in the game with that double 10. 
Fourth leg is Mount to throw first. Game on. Looking to hold throw. He's right back in there in that treble 20. 180. Well, from that stat we were just talking about, Danny Lowby clearly likes to get his money's worth in a game of darts. 140. Play as many legs as possible. 322 legs. Well, does that mean he's soft in others and he gives a few up too easily? 41. Who knows? I think every dart player feels they give their game a few gags up a little 16. bit easily if you if you asked everyone. One hundred. Coming throws the dart. They stay thrown, don't they? One hundred. It really puts them in there with force. Tells them they're exactly where they are going. 140. Who wouldn't want to do what they were told if Mal Cummins told you what to do? 140. Mal, you require 40. Good leg. Just Danny Lowby give himself a sign of encouragement. No score. Danny requires 61. handed him a sign of encouragement. Get a dart. James That's Shot all he needs. Leg. He's back Danny in it. Lowby. Well, coming three darts, three clear darts to pull himself clear in this match. Fifth leg, it's Danny to throw first. Danny Game Lowby on. punishes the miss from coming. Could 58. overtake him in the table going into the overnight proceedings. 140. To be fair, now bounce back well there. Come in, has done. 100. What he needed to do. And he now needs to do it again. 100. Fifty-seven. Well, effectively turned the throw after six darts. He needs a red one to keep it. One. What a last dart that was. Leave himself a one six one. Now Lowy's coming with him. One hundred and twenty five. Mal, you require one hundred and sixty one. Sixteen. See, I like the twenty-five shot there with that last dart. Something that's came in, crept into my game. Yeah, I agree fully on that one. Give yourself the option of the two darts, or at least. Mal, you require like one hundred and one. Switch to the seventeens. Yeah, definitely the twenty-five. That would have been two darts at the double. Sixty-one. Said it's Danny the one, and again 64. over the crossbar. Game and shot again, the punished leg. by Dan Danny Lowby. Lowby. I don't think we'd have been too far excused of starting to write Danny Lowby off at Sixth leg two nil down when first. Game Mark Collins is opening legs with a maximum. But he has dug deep and he is showing that quality. The quality that has seen him win many 100. titles in America dating back to 2008. 100. 100. Got the bit between his teeth here now, Lowy, and has he got the momentum to go with 58. it? 58. Well, we had the momentum with Jordi Brewer in the last one. It was 3-0 down. Brought that all 57. the way back to 3-3 and then missed a handful of match darts. You sort of feel the way Lauby's going at the moment. But he's not going to turn down match darts. 58. You may have to wait till the 3-3 three, three situation. 43. 
92. Now you require 160. Six starts here for coming. He's got the luxury of 44. the setup. But not the application. 92. Now you require 116. Free opportunity here for Lauby. Where for coming. It's a must deal with situation. Danny you require Leaves 102. it handy. But will he come back? Lauby's already took the 102 today. Game. And he does sure. it and once match, more. Danny Lauby. This time, though, it is for the match. A turnaround victory there for Dan Lauby, who was 2 0 down in that one and then really started to hit the accelerator. Great checkouts there from Lauby, 66.67%. And that lovely 102 finish to end his day on six points. Same as Mal Cumming, and that game will be our first game tomorrow. Thank you very much, Matt. Scott Mitchell alongside me up here on the balcony. Let's just begin by talking about that last match. Fair reflection of both players' day, six points? Yeah, I think so. I think they've both had their moments and they've both had their non-moments, but the fact that they're on six points means they're still in the mix with the two guys that are at the top on eight. Well, let's have a look then at the table now then, following the completion of the first day's play. It's Lee Cox and Wesley Hans at the top of it on eight points. Let's go through the players one by one. We'll begin with Wesley Hans because first appearance here at the Super Series, not really seen him on the TV stage for a little while, so perhaps... Maybe we didn't quite know where the form was going into it, but what he has shown us today is a very impressive and a very high level. Yeah, he's still playing Dutch Super League stuff, which is, which is on Saturdays in Holland. He's right up there in the mix with that. He's number three in their rankings, and that's no mean feat with the players that are playing there. So he's probably come in a little bit under the radar to what we know. Like you say, he hasn't been on TV much, but he showed exactly what he's still got. Let's talk about Lee Coxon, because he's also on eight points. He's the man who's going to lead the table going into the second day's action. Do you feel like now he's been here so many times, he's had so many trials, so many tribulations, he's come so close so many times. Do you feel like this time there's a different air about him, a man that wants to now make it through to Champions Week, desperate to get through to Champions Week? I think there's an air of knowing how, what it feels like to play here. This is very different to playing anywhere else, as I found a couple of weeks ago. You know, you lose a game, you chastise yourself a little bit. He's not doing that. We, comment, we, we mentioned that in commentary, that the, 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 the down moments that used to really get him have just passed him by today a little bit, and he's been a better player for it. What have you made of Moreno Baum and Yuri Brewer today? Um, they're just a first-time kid. You can see that. They're, 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 they, they will have, if they can just take stock in an hour or so's time of, of, of stop sort of beating themselves up, they will have learned things today, and I think we'll see them both play differently tomorrow. As we know, Tuesday's moving day. It is always moving day, and we've still got a lot of excitement to come. So see you tomorrow morning? I'm not missing it, mate. Well, join myself, Scott Mitchell and Matthew Edgar for all the action tomorrow morning, 9.30am here on the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. And Series 4 has got off to a rip-roaring start.